Well, welcome back from what was an incredibly short break. It is now time for the second half of the show, and we've now got Jesse joining us. Jesse, how are you feeling? I'm feeling great. I yeah. know a bit of a step down from Helby, but uh, I'm excited to join the desk and uh, talk about this upcoming game for sure. I'm still pained that that uh, halftime show of losing the way that I did and found out production gave the answer away. Wow. A little disappointed. I was trying hard. You had to go drop the, the BTS, didn't you? I, you I did. I felt. I feel cheated. You feel, feel cheated. Because there was cheated. no way he guessed Vigil. No, no, there was absolutely... That's what sent me. I don't know if anyone could see it. I was dying <laughs> laughing off the slide just because of the reaction. It was the reaction that got me. Of course, teams behind us, W7N and VP. They go head-to-head, -to -head, top of Group C at the moment. Will it remain that way? God only knows, that is for damn sure. But both of these teams probably coming into this, this might well be the match of the day. And it, it, uh, by all means, it should be Jesse. Yeah, it really should. W7M, Virtus Pro, two teams that we expect to be towards the top of this group. Already VP have suffered a loss. It was a close game to Liquid. They definitely could have uh, gone all the way there, but didn't quite grab the dub. W7M, kind of a different story. Technically undefeated, they're 2-0, and but both games looking somewhat shaky. I mean, I'm just happy for VP. Given the Atlanta performance and what they're doing here now, it's a huge step up for them. And I genuinely think that this is going to be another game for W7M that they're going to get tested. I mean, if you think about it, W7M has been getting tested this entire time. Yeah. So VP, this game in general, this is going to be another testament for both of these teams. It certainly is, and we're speaking about them. So let's go ahead and uh, start to dive in to W7M. My in-game name is Philippox. Uh, I'm from W7M, and uh, I'm the IGL for the team. I feel amazing playing in Sao Paulo. So I think it's going to be like the biggest tournament in my life. It's a six invitation, it's already a big tournament. And playing in Sao Paulo, uh, I've never played in my country before, so I think it's going to be insane. I'm not afraid of anyone, but I think we're going to have great matches. Our first game is going to be against M80. It's always a great game against them. Uh, the last time we played, uh, we lost. So I think we are going to get our revenge right now. We are here to win, but we are trying not to think that as much uh, because we already got a lot of pressure because everyone's saying uh, that we are the favorites for the, the tournament. Uh, so we are just doing our, our work uh, as we always do and not thinking as much as in the finals. Uh, we are just going game by game. E aí, M80, vocês estão ligados que da última vez vocês deram sorte, né? Vocês ganharam lá na, na Arábia, dessa vez não vai ser de, dessa maneira. E o Budega, pelo amor de Deus, né? Você sabe que você vai perder pra mim. Well, I tell you right now, this roster has made waves throughout 2023. And now we're into a new year, Laxing. Does that mean new team? Same team, <laughs> different org after this, but no, these guys have stayed very consistent across the board. That is a phenomenal five roster that you could possibly play with. I mean, Philly Pox, a lot of you don't know, or maybe some of you do know, Philly Pox stopped me at a lot of my SI runs. So him to be on this team is no surprise to me in the way that he's performing and taking that IGL role and helping these guys keep pushing further into a possible SI championship. Making a little selfish, does it, uh, does it make you feel a little better knowing that he's where he is now? I mean, I'm just happy, you know, yeah, I'm happy to yeah. see where he's gone because he's a phenomenal player and to now see him on the best team in the league right now. Yep. It's it's I, I love to see that. I love to yeah. see just players keep rapidly growing their success and making history. Well, a phenomenal player on a phenomenal team, Jesse. Are there any ways that you think you can kind of disrupt something like 7M's playstyle? That's a great question. I think for W7M, the, what they're so good at doing is applying that pressure, right? They're really good at pressuring you, getting very aggressive, fighting you at all types of the map. They'll fight you in the early round, they'll fight you in the mid round, they'll fight you in the late round. But yesterday, we saw one particular player on bleed really shut them down in those early hyper aggressions. And that was actually Mentalist. He did really good with the drones. And for all these three clips I want to show you, pay attention to the drones. You just saw one at his feet, immediately herds get gets cleaned up. That was on Clubhouse. They go then to map two, and the drones are again strong. You see Mentalus finding players out. Herds, there's the drone, just caught him. Herds takes the gunfight, loses it again. Mentalist is there. And again, we're gonna see the intel coming through time and time again with him going down. Now it's KZ on the roam, no longer Herds, but there are gonna be drones that are around this map, hunting him down, making sure that W7M don't get this pressure for free. In this third clip, 
KZ hits some nutty shots, and so it doesn't actually go the way of bleed. But I think it still demonstrates that the intel is there, and this is what you have to do against W7M. Because they're always wanting to apply more pressure, because they're willing to swing you, even when they're in the 5v3, you need to be ready for it. You need to have those drones available. And I think for Virtus Pro, they're a team who needs to be able to step that up. And I think looking at their play style, because they are a bit of a cautious team, they'll be able to have that same impact on the drones and the intel to shut down herds, shut down KZ, like we saw a bit from bleed. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And talking about VP, I was watching their game yesterday against M80, and that's actually what they did beautifully against M80, is they shut down that aggression that M80 typically shows up and brings. So if they can apply this going into W7M, and again, learn from that Atlanta of playing all against all the Brazilian teams and W7M again, and just shutting down that aggression and forcing engagements in their favor, we're going to see VP on top. We've been talking about them a lot. Now let's uh, hone in a little bit closer on VP. My name is Joystick, and I'm playing for Virtus Pro on Open Fire Roll. Our goal is to go here for the stage and like show everyone what we can do as a team. Our group is uh, Group C. We were playing versus Liquid, W7M, M80, and Bleed. Our first match will be versus Liquid. We have uh, a lot of like matches before. We didn't win them any time, so it will be a crazy matchup because they are Brazilian teams. We are like a Europe team. We are playing so slow, they're playing so aggressive, so it will be some crazy stuff, different play styles, different like countries. It, it will be amazing in my opinion. Hey Liquid, you know that we are never trash talking to the other teams, so just have fun and I think we have a good match. Well, it is time to focus on VP because this is a team that fully know what it's like to be in these positions and well and truly can do the damage, Jesse. Certainly. I think Virtus Pro really have had a great tournament start off so far. Obviously lost that first BO3, but looked pretty strong. And against W7M, they're one of the more formidable, uh, formidable teams. When we look back at Atlanta, Virtus Pro were the only team to maintain at least a 50% attacking win rate in their matches against W7M. Now, it was a small sample size. They only played four rounds attacking against the Brazilian squad. But still, every other opponent W7M faced the tournament couldn't even hit that 50% mark. I think it's that slow, methodical, very cautious playstyle that VP bring to attack that does have an opportunity to shut down W7M. Now, their defense is in that W7M game, pretty poor. So when it comes to that second half, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. But I do think for Virtus Pro, stylistically, they've got some ways that they can take advantage of W7M. All right, well, it's time to start to paint the picture. Let's go to the vetoes and figure out where we're going for this best of three, which we're assuming will go the distance. Chalet, Bank, Consulate, and Oregon band out first here, Lax. Interesting Whoa. seeing Skyscraper. Mm. So I was actually just told from Helby when we first were talking about this, he said they're Skyscraper. They actually take a lot of strats from. A lot of a lot of Wolves strats have came from VP setup. So VP, wow. this is actually a shocker to me to see Skyscraper coming through with that on top of it. I mean, I genuinely think that they're prepared for this. Mm. They know what W7M might not like to do yep. overall. But I mean, I think overall, this actually is a surprise pick that's going to catch maybe W7 off a little bit. So going into that next map is... I'll leave that to Jesse. I mean, this whole map ban phase, go back three months ago and say that VP are playing a BO3 where both Border and Skyscraper are, are in the hand. No. And that would be insane. You'd be laughed out of the room because this both used to be two permabans for Virtus Pro. It's very clear we have a brand new team coming through. I'll touch on Cafe quickly. W7M's best map no. by far. They love this map. Seven and one record this season. They're going to be very comfy when they go there. But all in all, uh, the story of Virtus Pro's map pool this event has been extremely fun to watch so far. Far. We saw a border get debuted on the first day of groups. Now we're going to get to see Skyscraper. Well, you know what? We don't have to wait any longer. It is time to get underway with our first matchup. Skyscraper, W7M, Virtus Pro. And of course, to run you through all the action, Xenox and Death. Yeah, I can't lie. I was a little bit mesmerized there by Jesse's head. It looked like three little spider legs poking out to the side. <laughs> uh, lovely work, though, gentlemen, of course, That's on the desk. trying to escape. <laughs> exactly. Uh, we've got a big match here, Des, though. I mean, huge. W7M, VP, technically, as of right now, one and two in Group C as well. A group that is ultra stacked. Mm. I'm excited for this one, and we get to head to Skyscraper. We do. This feels like a real, the kind of match you'd expect to see coming into, like, late-stage playoffs, even like a quarter-final-style fixture, right? There were doubts about VP coming into the comp Competition, but Jesse was just talking about it on the on the desk there. They debuted Border yesterday, Skyscraper. They haven't played this since April last year, so they're really bringing out all the all the stops, all these hidden strats in a way. 
and it might be enough to topple the team that many are looking at and expecting to win here in Brazil after their success last year. Only the 26 rounds played of Skyscraper so far, so not one of the more prominent maps, I guess, mm. especially coming from the game that I did earlier, which was Chalet and Clubhouse, the two most prominent maps that we've got at the event so far. 69% defensive win rate here on Skyscraper, going with the theme here at Six Invitational 2024, where it's all about defense. Who's starting there first? It's W7M. You know, I hate to say it, but Fresh is very right. He was saying when we were talking about defensive win rates a few days ago, he was like, you know, historically we've seen 55, maybe like high towards 60s. So he thinks, oh, I think we'll go towards 65 to 70. And I was like, that's a high number. Yeah. But he's pretty spot on. We've got a lot of maps in that kind of 65 to 70 range at the minute, which is alarming. But that's exactly how it stands. Bands flying on through. Grim, been a real staple for so many teams in their lineups and the attacking yeah. path throughout this tournament so far. And Ying, you caught it earlier on. Virtus Pro, a very prominent fan of theirs. Yeah, it's also one from W7. M, so they kind of like look at that as maybe a bit of a freebie. His army does also get banned down by. Oh, wow, I didn't know we get first pro bans now. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised if Solus is the last one. In fact, I would be surprised if it is not the last one. And it's actually Kaid. W7M typically ban out the Solus. And I think on a map like Skyscraper, where you can get that information, I'm a little surprised to see it do come through at the hands of W7M. They get rid of the Kaid. So very curious to see how it plays out here as we get into this one. In terms of what's on the line, there's first spot in this group. This could be the deciding match when it's all said and done. That's exactly how it looks to me. These guys have both got one game left after today. Uh, we've got W7N coming up against their brethren in Team Liquid and Virtus Pro come up against Bleed. By no means easy matchups, but if they really are going to be topping this group, whichever team wins today, you'd hope they go on to win the next. So for me, I'm with you. This feels like the game that determines who gets that instant spot buy into the quarterfinals in the upper bracket. In terms of what, yeah, you get that. You just go straight to the quarterfinal. Not only that, you avoid the other first place teams in their respective groups until then the semi-finals as well so certainly something that you would want to get if possible doesn't mean it's do or die in this particular match like you said there's still another game after this for these two teams respectively but still you want to take that form that good form as well into the playoffs excited for this though w7m virtus pro we kind of look at some of their uh, recent matches vp of course did lose out to liquid 2-1 uh, but bounced back against an m80 squad that is clearly getting beaten up in group c they are, but they're really putting up a fight, aren't they? They've had some great games. The game against W7M was unbelievable, but it still was the Latin team coming out on top. And Matey probably feeling a lot like an APAC team, I'm afraid, here, whereas you get so close, but not quite far enough. Well, you say that, an APAC team did take a map off of W7M in that 2-1 win for W7M over Bleed. As we get into this one, it is going to be Virtus Pro, though, trying to find an entry point here into Skyscraper. The Solus, as I mentioned, was not banned out by W7M. Immediately, Philippe pops straight on it, and it's going to be very influential. What I love from this is immediately W7M have identified that the point of ingress is coming into this east side of the map, and you've got three players from W7M all playing around each other. The Solus downstairs, you've got the Legion and the Mute on the upstairs, and they're just playing as this little tight-knit triangle with the Solus really guiding the two above and trying to keep Virtus Pro at bay. When they're done around this area, they've got cover coming in around Shrine. It was drum, but the Fenrir has just moved away from that point as well. Nice shot onto one, again, keeping Virtus Pro on this side of the map. But just that team play where everyone is looking to work towards supporting this east side hold, and it's working, is really impressive to see. Yeah, very extensive roam here from W7M to just push out to the south side of this map over towards Office and Exhibition. KZ understanding there's one close by in terms of outside that position. A lot of balcony play right now from Virtus Pro. They're finding it a little bit difficult to get some map control here. They're not really able to get into these entry points. Such is the case with Skyscraper. It can be quite easy for the defenders to really maybe make these oh. toe holds, if you will. <laughs> and it's going to be Hertz that finds a second in this round already. Might be on for a third indeed. An opportunity <laughs> Giving it to the quad from Hertz. What a start. There's the flawless round. That was absolutely scintillating from W7M. It was, and I was just watching the drone count being chewed down as well. I think they're down to four at the very end, and no one was inside the building. They managed to get the VIP wall opened up, and that was it. That was all VP managed to achieve in round one. And again, I'll come back to that team play coming out of W7M. The soul is below for information. The two playing upstairs. They had a player eventually move off-site entirely. They completely abandoned the west side of the map and have one player in Shrine and one in Drum. They're just moving as a full unit here. It's like watching a formation in like a soccer match, all moving together. Uh, all with the same goal in mind. Football, uh, mate. Football. I'll say soccer because lots of NA audience. Okay. Although it all feels right. dirty saying it. <laughs> I'll tell you what really made me laugh yesterday. Fun side story. Uh, recently, Stokes has really got into soccer, football, uh, and started supporting Liverpool, which is Tim's team. Of course. Yeah, which I'm sure you're very... So you, you support Everton, Everton mate. Oh, yeah, I'm, unfortunately. So, I'm so sorry. Now, there's any out. Evertonians out well, the there watching is, right now. Stokes brings the real, like, American sports fan energy to football, mm -hmm. where it's like, I shout louder than you, and therefore you're wrong. 
And I'm like, wait, we don't do this over here. And he's like, well, I do. And I'm just like, okay. Oh, my God. Here we go. Yeah, it's been a fun day. Well, rough start, though, for Virtus Pro. Couldn't get inside of the building. Balcony was basically the only foothold they had. That was outside in the exterior. So clearly troubles, especially with the drone game and the Solus that's into effect. Philippox played it last round. Now Hertz swaps onto it for this particular round. Again, it is a band that W7 usually bring, but maybe feeling it's something they could abuse, especially starting on the defense and maybe opting, hey, let's just abuse it ourselves and try and get a really big lead that we can build on. Similar style setup, though, for W7M, at least four players is spawning off towards the northeast side and the looking to get themselves started on the balcony first and foremost so display is going to be the main point of ingress looking in towards located. the vip wall once it gets opened up by dan as well the reason why you got the zofia on side here with always is to make sure it can't be bandit tricked on the other side you open up the window below blow the floor out exactly as always will demonstrate here and this simply cannot be denied away but just for good measure he'll do it anyway Whopping 80% defensive win rate for Office the next edition. Two of the rounds that, of course, that it's been played. Slightly <laughs> small subset, but I'm ready. Ashford gets a nice opening kill on the breach there onto JV. Good start there for Virtus Pro. Still, though, similarities to the round prior where it's a lot of this balcony play. They're not really going for that kind of entry towards, say, the T Room karaoke side and then sweeping across and trying to take these choke angle fights towards, say, the mezzanine go. drum. Instead, they're going very direct, playing off of the ROUs there from Joystick as he just throws them out, That's maybe right. going for a bit of an early plant here, but denied by Need. This is the problem. You've got Philippox on side as well. He can deal with this. You're playing on the Warden with all these light screens going up. It's like a play park for the Warden at this point. They shut down the two, and that really was the Hail Mary from Virtus Pro. They put a lot of stock in that sense working out, and now they don't really have any operators, any utility to make and execute work. It's going to be hard to get anything done in these last 90 seconds against the four men alive on W7M. Yeah, and they don't have kit control either for Virtus Pro. So for W7M, not only have they not displaced, they've still got sight, and they've also got good position in terms of that kit. Virtus Pro now also maybe going for a bit of a last rotate to try and get themselves entry into the map and then eventually push through those chokeholds of Drum, for example. So they've gone now towards that eastern side, the tea room karaoke side, if you will. Pasha now makes his way through the hallway. He's going to have to deal with Philippox and Philippox found the kill onto Dan at the same time as well. I think that might have been in towards Geisha. Either way, makes this task so much more difficult now for VP. They're trying to all pull themselves back together to push forward as a unit, but as you say, Philippox has already sliced that plan in half. They've got up clear entirely from west across the east inside 40 seconds, and it's simply not going to happen. You know, one 4K in one round, a 3K in the next, W7M, they're having the run of things right now. Ah, a little bit disappointing right now for VP, but it's, to me, also just so far Skyscraper being Skyscraper. Really difficult to enter. It's defensive sided. We've seen that already at this tournament, up to 70% if you want to round it up. And obviously for a team in W7M that are already shaping up at 68% defensive win rate, it's going to be tough for VP. So they need to find opportunities early. I didn't actually necessarily hate the ROUs there from the sense to try and get a bit of side control, go in, maybe a bit of a fast play, catch W7 off guard. Clearly didn't work, but they tried something. And as long as you're trying something, you might be able to pull it off every now and then. Yeah, I missed exactly what happened to the light screen, whether it bounced off the corner of the wall and it took a further one thrown deeper to go all the way through to back site. But that one missing panel, that small gap that you saw them go charging through was far too easy for W7M, Nade in particular, to get the close down on. Untroubled so far in those first two rounds, it feels like. Some good ideas coming out of Virtus Pro. You're seeing this very kind of early, heavy hitting towards site that we've seen mm. so many teams employing in the current meta at this competition, but it hasn't worked for them yeah, twice. And here, there probably needs to be a bit of a change in tack. At least with the lineup they've got, things look to be slowing down. I'm looking at the Flores, for example, I'm thinking about the gridlock. Not exactly the kind of operators you see and say, oh, that suggests a really fast play coming up this round. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be opposed to maybe seeing VP, though, go for a bit more of a map wide take. Again, you're going into that Solus, though, and that can be very influential in shutting that down, especially when he wants to drone forward to find these positions. If the Solus is in good positions to then don't deny those drones, that makes it very difficult to do that. Hence why you might then go for a bit more of a direct approach. So it's the third round, though. So far, all signs pointing to a W7M onslaught. VP are the ones that need to really pick up the pace here. And pace is something of a, an issue for the minute 30. Of course, they're being quite slow. In fact, second last only. The ever, uh, well, poor D+, plus, if you will. There's a lot of different words I could use there. We'll just go with poor for now. They're a minute 36. So obviously, VP, in terms of their pacing, is something that maybe they would look to improve on in this particular series. Yeah, whereas at the other end of the spectrum, you've got, what, for W7M at second, I think, fastest time to end. Fourth fastest. Incredibly quickly. I mean, sure enough, they're keeping it there at 54 seconds, making things move nice and quick. 
And once again, Birders Pro are challenged. This is really where teams, you get to a spot where you isolate and identify there is a player completely by themselves. And some teams have been excellent. SSG jumps to mind here at finding a player and just collapsing with three or four players, guaranteeing at least a trade. But more often than not, you get away scot-free with a free kill and you can press forward with the numbers advantage. But here, they've let Herds flip the net and that is unforgivable. Sensational start from Herds though. Six and oh, as he has started perfectly. Of course, had the quad in the opening round as well. Followed on with a couple of kills since then. Geisha is where they go, though, in terms of Verdas Pro to get a bit of that Vert up above in terms of kitchen and barbecue. A minute and 30 seconds remaining in the round. Philippe Pox wanting to be aggressive at that hole. Pash is able to get a drone through in Crazy past drums. So that's not bad. A little bit of information, but I think might have actually just got misdroned. He then gets a kill. Pasha falls. That makes it three versus five. Is the trade going to come through? Not necessarily straight away. The flash goes oh, in, but it hadn't soon. actually popped and always went a little too early there. Great read from KZ, though, sees the flash and just takes that chance to step across to the right, gets a couple of shots in, and ultimately has done so much work there. Again, he slips the net, though. Finally, one comes back, but it's not from conventional means, it's from a Claymore. And yet again, we've got another multi-kill coming in here, Xenox. It's been three rounds, three different players, three multi-kills. Virtus Pro being bullied on that pick. Yeah, they really are. Glad you mentioned that too, in terms of the map pick itself. This is Virtus Pro's map pick. Shepard at least getting something here towards the end. Two kills around that balcony position. Could make his way in towards Geisha if he wishes, with 30 seconds remaining. This is still a possibility, as he does have Kit. A couple of Rateras at this point, though, too late into the round. He does throw out his final flash. Couldn't quite dislodge Herds. He does make his way in towards Geisha. Tell Good you what. shot. That's the downhill. Know that too. Still needs to make the drop, though. Get in towards Sai. Hasn't got the time to get away with it, sadly. I don't think he'll have to Hail Mary his yeah, way downstairs. Like and either pray lucky that JV's held close. You can see him on the right-hand side. Of course, he doesn't know that. Bye. Shepard's got the right idea. JV's there for the step out, though, and gets a very close round that really shouldn't have gone that way with KZ's 3K in the middle. I want to say a little bit better, mainly because of the effort we saw at the end there. But let's be also honest, the vast majority of that was still quite difficult for Virtus Pro in their attack. It was W7M. They were able to get the first couple of kills. What if they have like a five on three lead? They're winning the early contact fights. VP are struggling to get map control. They're certainly not able to hit site either. Yes, maybe W7M got a little overzealous towards the end, fed, fed a few kills, but still, regardless, it's three nothing and it's a VP timeout. So clearly they're not too happy with the way things are transpiring at the moment. It's essentially a guarantee that on your map pick, if you go down three rounds in a row, and truthfully, even on maps that aren't your pick, you'll tend to take this time out after three rounds. It's that end of the first quarter. You've seen a three-site rotation. You know what sites you're coming back to. And it's a good chance to kind of take a pause, break the momentum of the team that is running away with things, but also go over, okay, then, we've seen those three sites. What has got to change here? What has been really biting us in the backside? And the difficult thing is, I think you've seen three very different rounds from W7M there. Round one, looking back at it, it was that massive hold out towards X exhibition yep. where VP couldn't even get inside the map. As it's then worn into things, they have got inside the map, but they've struggled to pinch in on individual players that are isolated, like KZ here. At the start of the round, it was Herds in round two in a similar spot to getting multiple kills. Now it's KZ not being appropriately punished and getting his team three kills there. You can see there at that point, it was a four versus one, and then mm. they started to peek the window a little bit. Shepard on the, the balcony outside, Geisha was able to get a couple of kills, brought it back, eventually got inside of the map and actually then made it a one versus one. So a decent effort. Yeah. But I mean, he's ultimately, before, wasn't he as well, right? Almost yeah. pulled that off. And ultimately, though, comes nothing. That's the, the the name of the game here. We go back to T Room and Karaoke, though, here under the fourth round. Last time out was that extensive hold over towards Office and Exhibition, denying any kind of take from the opposite side of the map. Do wonder then if VP might opt to switch it up, hit this a little bit more direct, maybe get a bit of vert control down below, push up back stairs. Either way, they do need to change it up. I'm reading my mind there, and I'm completely with you as well. I think going into site direct would be the play if you know they're stacking up hard towards this east side. Prepping here really for any kind of runouts or cheeky and early aggression. It's been a couple of those moments across the last few rounds. Just making sure with the EE1D coming out that nothing's going to bite them. Well, the spawn doesn't really suggest, though, that they're going to be going for said direct unless they rotate later in the round. Right That's now, it. though, it, it is going to be Office and Exe. As long as they're quick to make that decision in the mid round, then it's going to be okay. I mean, here they are dedicating four players into towards taking this side of the map, as we've seen historically. I mean, there are that many players out here, but they're not all stacked up trying to force their way in through display, for example. So a little bit different, but as I said before, they cannot let players like Herds and Casey keep on slipping through the net. It's all good seeing them and saying, cool, we've got to isolate them now. You leave their entryway out completely clear. 
let them get kills for free. That just cannot carry on. But I think it's interesting for me as well. W7M, they're not getting too over aggressive. We're not seeing like massive spawn peaks or run outs or anything like that. I say that, Hertz is actually now down, but he should be Drops. brought back up by yeah. Philippe. So from that drop, he's quite safe down below. That's okay. Might though, for momentarily reasons, allow VP into the map on the upside portion of that side of the map. So they've got to take advantage of these little wins. I think it was always getting the down a very, very fine angle that he was holding this one. You can see right here. Thank you very much, Mr. Observer, which led to Kurds dropping away, which now means there's only one player on the upstairs around the exhibition side. It's enough to make them wary, bearing in mind we're halfway through the round that yet again, they aren't inside the building and you've still got support from Dragon and Shrine coming in again. So there's still many, so many layers they need to unpeel here in case he's got a two. It keeps on happening and there is simply not a convincing enough response from Virtus Pro. Hate to say Make it. Make it a third. Hate to say it. But this is looking like an EU APAC team right now. Virtus Pro is slow on the entry. Can't get map control. Can't find kills. Losing these rounds so comfortably. But W7M, they're just not making really that many mistakes. Four versus one. Oh, oh Casey. Shot through the wall. Shot through the heart. It's a slaughter here on Skyscraper right now. Four nothing to W7M. The key word you used a couple of sentences ago for me was comfortable. Mm. Outside of coming down to that 1v1, that was a bit of a freakish moment because it was almost on a, a 4v1, essentially come back for the side of VP. I don't think W7M have really looked or felt threatened. In the fact that KZ stepping out as the sole man left on that top floor, because I even said, like, two players have dropped away. He's alone up here. They didn't seem to know that he was in that spot to make a swing happen. And bless always, he's tried his best. He swung onto the man about two or three seconds after his teammates have died and lost that one versus one. Just the team a little bit out of sync here, missing some crucial parts and W7M set up, being caught unawares or simply just falling at the first hurdle because yet again, they haven't got inside the building. No, they haven't. It's been a struggle. One thing I'll say as well, again, VP's map pick, Skyscraper, they're not the worst attacking team at this event either, especially in an event where attacking has been difficult. 42% attacking win rate is only 3% less than W7M. On a map two where a tertiary site like Barbecue and Kitchen is only a 57% defensive win rate, that's where you've got to be getting these rounds. Mm. So when they did lose that and that third round took the timeout, clearly they, they felt like one of their win conditions had already been lost. Now we go to say an office at exhibition and has a whopping 80% defensive win rate. This is going to be very difficult for VP to claw back the rounds now. They're kind of staring down the barrel of like a 5-1 half, which really sets W7 up because they're a team that certainly can attack and will find rounds on those tertiary sites. I liked First Pro's plan set up with the Sens last time around on this side, but they've gone for a very standard staple go for here. And rather than trying to push out towards the west side and sweep their way across like most teams would do, once again, they're trying to go direct to site. They seem to absolutely love this east side of Skyscraper and don't have have a change plan button anywhere on their control panel. Yeah. Where's the where's the vert roams? Where, where's the push in slow? You got a karaoke, bird fight underneath the vehicle shout, for example. Yeah. Seems teams abusing that an awful lot this tournament, given there's no verts for frag nades anymore. The buck actually is way more powerful. And to give it to Pasha and to Joyce, again to Shepard and to Always, they have now rotated over far towards the west side and left Dan on his lonesome looking in towards the site itself. Yeah, and in some ways, could have given the plot at to VP. They've switched it up a little bit. We're asking kind of where is this push from the, the more southeastern side? Well, here it comes also with a little bit of that vert in terms Herds. of the roam. Hertz is on the move as he would be and should be on the solar. And it's going to be good for one to always that's just uh, i mean why is he going in ahead of the drone and the drone hasn't even confirmed the room is clear yet it's a little bit oh. early and i was going to say pasha was sniffing around on the book inside a barbecue he's just walked straight into herds as well but this is the thing you've got a man going in separate and being picked off because he's locked yep. in the animation yep. Yep. then a drone comes through then pasha's there a few seconds later and now casey's almost shooting someone else in the back and finding joystick for free anyway it's, it poor is execution. So, it's just so oh my mis God. so much miscommunication so broken in terms of how the team are approaching the round and again W7M don't feel challenged right now they're just kind of waiting for them to come in the building and gunning them down as soon as they do can we have another timeout? Like, can we just give them one more? Did we see them donate theirs? <laughs> <laughs> Say, hey guys, I'll do you a favor. Let's call attack timeout now, just for you, just for you. Now look, coming into this particular series, Des, I'm gonna be honest, I, I felt really hyped. I felt like this should be a good game. I felt like obviously for Virtus Pro, they were competitive against Liquid. They got a map, they beat down M80. Obviously they're second in the group right now. W7M, is there a sense of maybe vulnerability after they dropped the map to Bleed yesterday? Mm. All of those things made me feel like coming in to today that we were going to get a decent match, but right now, 5 nothing start. It's not so much the 5 nothing; it's the rounds themselves that have just been so utterly dominant. I always say passion can get a bit passionate, and that's exactly what we saw there. 
Not happy. And I wouldn't be either when your team has got five kills across five rounds. Look down that leaderboard on the left-hand side of your screen. Two players on a donut, two with breadsticks, and Shepard with three. And that was off the back of that almost 1v4 that he almost pulled off but didn't quite achieve. On the other side, no member of W7M has died more than once. You've got two players set on eight kills. Like, this has probably been the biggest golf I think that we have seen in a game so far at this tournament. And it's terrifying again that it's Virtus Pro's map pick. Final round of the half. Now we'll add the caveat. They get around here, close it out. This is doing just, kitchen, tertiary site. Then suddenly things This is change. disrespect now, because he knows they keep coming on the northeast side. And good shot sure on the upside down repair. Will pay for, for it. I did think, okay, look, I get it. You're confident, but that's maybe a little bit too far. And that's something that actually W7M haven't done a lot of in those opening five rounds. They didn't get too overzealous. They weren't getting too overly aggressive. They were holding good positions without taking that extra step that wasn't probably necessary. But as you said, I think Herd's probably just feeling like I'm on a bit of a heater. I'm the cap can. I put my EDDs down. I'll go for it. Look at me. I'm the cap can now. Felt it like he could go <laughs> for it. Like he had the call. Simply didn't put it off though. Anyway, four versus five. This is the best chance that Verdus Pro are going to have to get something out of this half. I would say the last thing you want off the back of a six zero half is to see match point every single round as you load in. Mm. So here getting even that one round of padding room just gives a little bit of hope that you have some semblance of control coming into the game still. Otherwise, I think this one's probably lights out very early on in the second half. Yeah, and every chance, if you do get this round, that you two can kind of replicate what W7M have done on a map like Skyscraper in this tournament, going to the defense, you get a couple of rounds, you can really start to get cooking and feel a bit more comfortable inside of the server. So this is a massive round, minute 40 here left remaining again for Virtus Pro, typically slow in their approach, in their entry, but getting that earlier kill onto Hertz means they do have the numbers advantage. They can overload some of these positions. And they see, you can see in the outlines how spread out they are across the map as well. They're all over the shop. Yeah, I've got two or three players out towards the East, got one outside of Balcony, one trying to face their way in towards Window and Geisha as well. And W7M again, with this little triangle set up essentially for Leapox on the downstairs. You've got JB, you've got KZ, trying to keep them at bay and keep them away. But there is always a player on W7M within a second or two ready to play for a trade. Doesn't help if you're dying from the outside of the map, mind you. Always getting himself on the board finally. 5v3, half Virtus Pro done enough. Yeah, certainly a lot better from that minute left. Don't count out W7M though, the way that mm -hmm. they've been playing, especially with KZ still inside of the server. 8 and 1, been an absolute menace so far. Still one impact available as well for JV. I mentioned his name though, and he's dead. So talk about a bit of a cast the curse, and that uh, should honestly. now be the round for VP in a 5 versus 1. KZ, no. A flawless round. No montage plays there, no 1v5s. It is finally a round win though for VP. I find it so funny when you see such disparity between the round before and that round. Like absolute domination for five rounds in a row and then get completely dominated in the next. And maybe a little bit of overconfidence. Herds we spoke about at the start, the man's on eight kills, you're losing a big fragging player on your team. And then you've got players peeking onto the rappel and really feeling themselves that like they can get those kills and completely understand after five rounds of outright domination. But it was a lot of kills from outside the building for Virtus Pro. And the thing that we've remarked on a couple of times from W7M is they barely let them inside the building, but as soon as Virtus Pro are in, they're gunning their players down. Here, I think, just going that step too far and paying the price. It does give them a little bit of breathing room, but now, Virtus Pro have got to try and pull off a bit of a miracle to get several defensive rounds in a row to even things up here and potentially send it through to overtime. A win does feel a little bit difficult. Yeah, and, and touching on a little bit of what you just said there in terms of like slow approach, but once they do get the entry, they get the kills. 52% in terms of entry percentage in success rate, which is above 50%, which is probably pretty good in terms of the way the tournament has been going. There's actually a lot of similarities to a team like D Plus in that they're both very slow, but when they do get in, they're actually not that bad. So just pick up the pace a little bit. Bit, guys, okay, you don't have to overthink this, don't overcomplicate it. You're like a good 30 seconds slower than the likes of W7M. So, clearly, you want to emulate what the best are doing, pick up the pace a bit. That's your downfall right now. Either way, that's enough about VP's attack. Now we've got to see them on the defense. Yeah, it feels like immediately their comp has gone towards defense mode. Try and lock them out as best they can, whether it's the laser gates, whether it's the Fenrir's, whether it's the Legion Goo Mines, anything to slow down this W7M side, because as you remarked, with how fast they are on the entry, they like to hit you hard, they like to hit you fast. It's an Aruni. Can I say laser gates? Yeah, that was terrible. Oh, sorry. I guess laser gates! <laughs> I guess I've lost my, my pitch to replace it. 
Liz the good stairs. Liz the good. Why is he suddenly lost his nuts? Why is he suddenly? St <laughs> What's going on? I can't do it. I can't do it. No, that, what, sorry. What I, have, um, I had a uh, good try and say something earlier. I forget what it was. Oh, I tried to get into rage at bar and cocktail on cafe. Oh, right. It didn't work very well. No. <laughs> because Gus seems like the nicest guy in the world. He wouldn't rage. He does not seem like the nicest guy in the world. He's Jesse lovely. is probably the nicest guy in the world. <laughs> you know, is Jesse. Jesse. Mm. Tell him he's wrong about his stats and you'll see the real side of Jesse. Oh, the rage. All right, let's get into this one. Seventh round to kick to start the second half. W7M, what have they got on the attack? Well, they go straight for that kind of sweep across style, straight over towards office and exhibition. Probably no two surprise here on a T-Room carry Ocean site. It is defended. Pasha gets a freebie mm -hmm. onto a Philippe Ox caught off guard. Yeah, making the same mistakes in the way that Virtus Pro did back in the first half here. Not got the drones in. Pasha manages to slip the net on the Fenrir and pick someone off quite comfortably. It's being pressured, mind you. Heard some are downstairs. JV's rounding on towards display. But Shepard L's first found KZ. Are we really going to see a game of two halves here? Because it feels like it based on this round. It's a large possibility. When you go and look at the statistics, this is why you don't really count teams out anymore. Even at 5-1, it's just the current state of Siege. This is just really the reality of it. Don't look at that 5-1 scoreline and think, oh, W7 has got this in the bag. Certainly in a good position. If they can find some more kills, turn this round around. There's still 60 seconds. Time. That good line does not go where it probably wanted to. By always doesn't get into the wards of the staircase. Either way, just under 60 seconds left. Good information here as well from Nate. He does have the kit Oops. and might just get a bit of a freebie. No, the yellow oh. thing is good, but it's old information. Misses that. The skeleton key doing some work, but not enough. And uh -huh. Shepard from above gets the kill. Followed up elsewhere by Pasha. Three versus one now. Virtus Pro looking a little bit better here on the defense. A little bit of deja vu, actually. We've seen him in this spot before. I think it was Shepard pushing into this spot and managing to find himself a few kills. And here it's Nate to try and do the same, but no such joy. Very cozy first round for Virtus Pro and again suggests there may yet be much more to skyscraping than we've seen so far. Yeah, I think that's certainly the uh, the statement there. And the storyline developing a little bit here is that, okay, yeah, great start from W7M. And a lot of those rounds were, I would definitely say, quite uh, one-sided in their approach. W7M looked extraordinarily strong. But VP have already shown in that particular round to start this second half that they've got the capabilities of doing something similar to replicate what we saw from W7M. Alrighty, exhibition office we go into for our next side. Defensive side again, leaning in towards some of these slower operators. This time the Frost coming along as well. And I love how fresh his bingo card. He had the one about Frost rework, still leads to defenders losing the round. I believe it was Grixer who got down and then got up and got a 3k off the back of it. It was pretty unbelievable. So keep a close eye on that one. No, Are you even playing Fresh as wrong? Huh? Are you even playing Fresh as wrong? No, no, he was very right. Oh, he was right. on his bingo okay. card saying when this happens, it's a get off, oh, and it, it happened. Yeah. And it was quite a beautiful thing to see. You know what would be a beautiful thing to see, though, is a bit of a VP comeback and to probably quell any okay, kind of nerves okay. about getting absolutely smashed on their own map pick. We'll see if that does eventually. Five, one site down, another one to go over towards office and exhibition. This is the curiosity for me, though, in the way that W7 are going to approach it. Again, so there's no Kayid. It has been down, banned down. And on a site like this, in terms of that main wall breach towards office, typically with those electric claws, you can at least be a little bit more difficult to open it up, but the thatch is available anyway. Ultimately means that, to me, this is something that, yeah, you can hit this in a, in a direct approach. It feels like a bit of a moot ban in a way, doesn't it? Because you have the thatch on side regardless. That is true. Let's see if they actually get away with it, though, if that's the focus for them, if that's where they want to try and push their way through. Probably more to secure and guarantee they can get in through the single VIP wall. It's a big focus point for both teams on this map so far. They have the Zofia on the downstairs, which normally is enough, and it's always that case of just in case they have a bandit on side that we haven't seen, that we can still make this happen. Got in from below, got also the factory MP coming on top, and the Salm is going down to make sure things go through, but it won't be opened up entirely as Pasha gets there with the impact. Yeah, I don't think that's necessarily awful either, though, for W7M. Still sightlines into VIP, so clearly they got to keep an eye on it. It's a bit of a threat. I think they're just happy to, like, open it up a little bit and then rotate over towards the Tea Room karaoke side anyway, and that's kind of what they've been able to go and do. This is a starting point. Unsurprisingly, it's a little bit slower this time, man. A lot more resistance being shown by Virtus Pro just to keep walls closed, for example. Just mean that W7 has to get a little bit more creative. Don't want to hard commit out towards this side of things. Right now, no one looking to get even in the fight. Virtus Pro actually holding quite firmly around the sides itself, and W7M slowly starting to enclose in. And there's the frostbite that we spoke about. But due to the rework, he'll be able to get himself back on his feet and rejoin the action. Just under... Albeit very slow. <laughs> yeah, very, very slowly. Minute 20 remaining, five versus five. So certainly not one of the more faster paced rounds. Mm. We've had quite a lot of early kills in these rounds of Skyscraper so far. Early contact fights pretty much being at the mercy of both teams. 
Dan still just kind of hiding behind this shield. More than comfortable as the eventual slow push from W7M is making its way across. Fleabox has finally got rid of that. Mez drums control. Dan, there's a man at your door and he's knocking. And then from the back side though, it's JV that comes in through the back door. It's a little bit of a mistake to hold so tight there, but I think he was hoping with the player behind him on the dragon statue that he'd watch the shrine window. Totally not the case. Always at least getting something back for his team starting to march on board. Having a pretty good game himself, mind you, at six and five. What to do here? Good flank coming in from Joystick. Gets rid of one, down to a 3v3. Yeah, and just getting on the front foot a little bit here, Virtus Pro, especially on the defense. They're making some plays happen. Oh. Gun barrel oh. sticks out. 3v3 for Daisy. Sorry, Joystick, but you were dead about five seconds ago. Does he know? Player behind the bar. Yes, he does. Casey takes a few shots. The Shepard is still dug in tight. No shotgun out, ready at close range. He's also got a contest with one coming in long, but the joint swing coming in. Some good two, three man setups there out of W7M to put these gunfights in their favor. And they get the round over the finish line up to map point. Yeah, and a very early attacking round there for W7M into the, just the second round and on a site that is so strong defensively. And honestly, at the same time, I didn't think first pro were all that bad. They made good little counterpoints. They got counter aggressive at certain points. When we saw that little swing back in towards drum, get a kill over across the mess. They were able to at least kind of keep W7 on, on their toes. Always, I really liked what he was able to do over towards the main stairs to drop down eventually then with the impacts, but he ended up dying. So a case of just kind of not being able to overly execute perfectly. These are the little things as well. Gun barrel sticking out, freebie for KZ. Then they had the double swing here onto the bar play and Shepard, he couldn't really do anything. He stands up, he's dead. He hides, he's dead. Yes, that's the problem, right? I mentioned it throughout. They had a few of these kind of joint moments of pushing in on players and probably that first mistake that conceded is trying control was hanging so close to shield. I get why he did it. You're being pressed in. You want to make sure you tuck in safe. But you are instantly exposed to that shrine window. And even the dragon player wasn't in a spot to be able to properly help out there, it appears. So small things really punishing Virtus Pro in that last round. Maybe over sticking to certain locations without a way of falling back. And that's the kind of thing that we praise Hertz for back in the first half. He get a kill and his fall back through a safe avenue before Virtus Pro closed the net around him. Whereas haven't really seen the same thing being done by Virtus Pro in that previous round at least. This could be the last round they're going into round nine. I do like the fact that they're just going to go for the repeat anyway, because statistically it's far better than, say, a barbecue and kitchen. So there's no reason to really go over to, to the tertiary site if you want to play it eventually, mind you, right? Well, you will have to play it eventually, but you would rather at least get there and get a couple extra rounds under your belt. Uh -huh. And it is an opening kill, though, for Hertz. That is uh -huh. rapid in terms of the pace. Over towards Black Stairs now, makes his way up. They've got themselves already a decent amount of control here for Leapox. I think it's around the map as well, just outside on the balcony. Joystick did get one back. Casey by himself still, no real help here, but eventually a drone did come his way and made its way down the hallway. Still very fast paced here. Feels pretty classic, doesn't it? Rank Tash that. 20 seconds in, top black stairs, looking for a gunfight. Yep, 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 we absolutely love to see it. However, he's also been taken out. So really the two big boys for W7M in this map, Herds and KZ. Not after the strongest start in the second half and both been neutered in this round, only three remain. Makes it a three versus three with two minutes remaining. <laughs> We've seen this a lot throughout the last few days is the game gets brought down to like a 3v3, a 2v2, sometimes even a 4v4. And there's still like the majority of the round to play. Teams just go so fast to try and bypass the heavy defensive setups that we see with the meta of his army, of Fenrir, of Solis, of whatever else you want to throw in the mix. Just so many operators at the moment that are very strong on the defensive side that it forces attackers to go aggressive and try and catch the defenders off guard and leads to these much quieter skirmishes that take place for the rest of the round. Drum is clear, has been live droned as well by JV, who I think maybe just spotted Joystick as well over towards Dragon. Minute 20, so still a decent amount of time here in the three versus three, which is no reason to be surprised as to why this has slowed down a little bit in that 3v3 mm -hmm. environment. W7M have just kind of cooled it back a little bit, got onto the drone game, get a bit more information. I think Joystick's made the right call located. to drop off the shield there as well. You look at that and think, well, there's less players available. They can't pinch you so easy, but it's exactly that why he's, he's conscious. He hasn't got no backup either as well. Pash has got to watch how stairs. You want someone inside a site for when someone comes in through Terrace, for example. So he hasn't got any real, you know, support in sticking up on that shield. He can't fall back if someone's at Shrine Window. He's just screwed, basically. So he'd rather play a little bit deeper in towards Dragon, hugging up against the Terrace wall, and again, play for that triangle that we saw coming out of W7M back in the first half. Stay close together. Look for those trades when it comes down to it. For Lee Fox, finding himself taken out by Pasha, a 3v2. Virtus Pro going good so far. 30 seconds remaining. Virtus Pro wanting to keep themselves alive here on Skyscraper. 
Nade looking to make entry. He's got JV close by as well. Together, they can play off of each other in the two versus three environment. Who's going to make the first move? Though, arguably, VP don't have to. They, they kind of hold these positions. It's the patience, right? And that's what I'm enjoying seeing here. There's left. no panic about it. There's no desire and rush to close the round. Just take it one step at a time as they're coming through the bottleneck. Pasha onto a three. Pasha for a four. Great round that it feels like a mirror of what we saw back in that first half, admittedly, with the slip-up in the previous round. But multi-kills galore coming in for Virtus Pro. Yeah, a bit of a strange round, though, for me. I mean, it starts off with a bit of a bang, if you will, for, you know, a little 2v2 action to begin with. Then it becomes a 3v3 with two minutes to go. Ultimately, then the, the game is going to just naturally slow down, go into that drone game, try and clear out some of these positions. But it was the decision-making from VP. You mentioned it. Come off that shield from Dragon, go back towards Sai, play off of each other. If you stay solo Dragon there, no one can trade you. If you do eventually then get swung on. So VP, I thought, played really well together towards the end. Used the numbers advantage. They were able to have those crossfires. Much better from them. And we said before, you've got to go to Barbecue and Kitchen. You do, but not right away. Because guess what? T-Run Karaoke has unlocked once again. And can just kind of keep VP ticking along. How old are you, by the way? 25 in my heart. 30, though... Oh, so I, can't really, I was going to say, I forget which team I watched play this earlier on, but they chose not to go to karaoke and team barbecue and kitchen was their preferred site. And I was going to blame not knowing which teams it was on old age, 31, but I'd be offending you at the same time because you are over the threshold. <laughs> the threshold is 30. Threshold 30, 30, 30 yeah. You're over the time, isn't it? Yeah. Great. I don't, I don't mind it, though. I'm, I'm all right with that. Yeah, exactly. Life's like, cool. I'm here in Brazil <laughs> talking about video games. Can't complain. <laughs> this round, close on for Epox. Probably for obvious reasons, Blitz has really grown in the meta. Teams are trying to move faster on the attack inside. Who's very good at being oppressive and moving fast? Yeah, well, it's the Blitz. And so what you're looking for here, I think, is W7M knowing they've got three opportunities to play and three sites they can rotate through. Karaoke and tea, barbecue and kitchen, then back over towards exhibition and office. They can try a few, I don't say cheesy things, but they can try and go very, very fast. They can try and slow things down. That hasn't worked super well so far. So this could well catch VP off guard if they play it right. Yeah, and it's very versatile for me as well in the way that you want to approach with the Blitz in terms of either site play or if you are even going to go for a kind of site-wide sweep across, say, from Oxy, uh, Office and Exhibition, even if you've got a player, say, holding drum, if you send that Blitz in to just overload that position so and then plays off of him, you can probably win that battle in the little 2v1 mini environment that you oh. would then create. But I think it's going to be fast here from Philippe Pox, making his way over towards Black Stairs. There's one here already, though. Good flash, pulls out the pistol. Nicely done. It's a bit scrappy, though, right now. Three versus three, but look how low Hertz is. Yeah, he really unlocked Hertz. Hertz is looking to be alive, to be fair. It was about 10 seconds prior that he took the shot, and then Philippe Pox used that focus on him to move his way forwards, and they've got the control they want. They've got top lap. The book survived to open things up. Everything is going according to plan. Good stuff. Pasha's made his way back over. He was holding Dragon side maybe anticipating a bit of pressure from VIP once that got opened up, but he has now been able to sort of make his way back a little bit towards the site. JV still down oh. low. Good little angle. Good <laughs> shot back, though, from Joystick. That felt like a critical moment. It did. Otherwise, numbers are stacked the other way, right? Herds is, you can breathe on him and he'll die at this point. Smoke comes through and really all rides on for Lee Pops working. So Magic is in for one. Oh my God. Always has got himself another. He missed the man and gets shot. Oh, man, that's unfortunate. Super unfortunate. It looks like a rank blitz moment, unfortunately. Just getting a bit stuck, not being able to catch the player, and just standing there with your shield like, ah, what it's do I do now? Case of right idea, maybe the execution a little bit off there from W7M. A little bit, yeah. I think as the numbers started falling apart as well, you know, really a lot of it hinged on that top lap push coming in from Herds and from Philippox playing on the blitz. Now, outside of that, you have one player able to play elsewhere, which means they couldn't easily contend for other parts of the map. But it came down to little things like this, like charging through when you haven't even fully droned out drum, knowing whether or not a player is going to shoot you as you go in. Uh, those are the kind of things that, although you look at it at the time and go, it's only one kill, those things fast accelerate into you missing crucial bits of utility or a certain position isn't covered properly. And that can be what leads to the downfall of a round. I also think they lost kit somewhere as well and it needed to be retrieved. Didn't quite see, could be wrong in that, but the last two players alive for w W7M did not have kit at the end of that game. So clearly you couldn't even go for, say, a little plant and play and go and force VP into a retake scenario. Mm. We go to 4-6 in the score line. This is good for VP. Obviously, you don't want to get 7 2 or 7 1 or anything like that. And let's be real, remember this game started as a 5 0 for W7M, and those were five very dominant rounds on the defensive skyscraper. Well, VP are clawing their way back. Two more to go to send this one to overtime. And they're onto that side that you said they were trying to avoid. Barbecue and kitchen, obviously, not going for the slightly crazier one out towards the bathroom side of the map. But if they win this, this game is unlocked. 
exponentially to go I, to OT. I would anticipate we go to overtime at that point because they'll go back towards exhibition. They've already shown they can defend that incredibly well. This site is that big question mark though, right? Nothing crazy in terms of lineup coming out of W7M as well. No, no rush, no nothing kind of globals coming in outside of the decay. We've seen a lot of Lion, for example, across many of the games over the last couple of days. So it feels like a very standard round and Virtus Pro seem to do pretty well with both styles, to be fair. They've dealt with the faster play. But admittedly, Philippe Ox did give them a few headaches in the previous round. Really breaking open back stairs on getting on top of the smoke, and that was quite easy. Uh, this round, though, with things looking a bit more standard, I think they'll feel a bit more at ease, a little more comforted and able to work their way through. I always love seeing a castle on pretty much any site in the game as well, as it lets you transform the way a site is, get, gets played. I talk about them a lot. The architects, as Ubisoft call them, Mira, Castle, looking into his army as well, do change how sites get played with their gadgets. If Virtus Pro win this round, there's a very high likelihood they can actually win the whole map because they've also got defensive side in OT. So ah. something to keep in mind there as well. They win this round. Suddenly, their probability of winning skyrockets yeah. and you would never guess that when the five rounds and they have five kills across the whole team that you'd see a turnaround like this still gonna get the win though still gonna get the job done it's still a five versus five just yeah, over 90 seconds the left the opening kill though from joystick on to nate outside of the balcony there goes the thermite okay job done anyway from him they got a little pressure from kz outside geisha there's one in there as well for vp and kz opting now to go onto the repel it's been much slower from w7 I mean, it is the nature though of the map but still a change up from their statistics earlier in this tournament hurts through okay, drum gets rid of default can he find anyone on the yellow ping? Yes, Joystick went for a wide swing through the doorway and he'll get punished. Now they can try and force their way back in through Geisha. I think you've still got KZ and JV sat on that side of the map looking to make something happen. But really, that means that things like Herds are the player to make an impact here as well, along with Philippox pushing their way in through Drum. But they're aware about the flank coming on through. Pasha Asha. might have them in the back here. Yeah, I think he could here. Philippox, I don't think he's got anyone watching. And Pasha just puts one bullet into the back of his head. Philippox gone. He was holding a key angle as well, looking in towards where we see a couple of players as well defensively for VP. Four versus three, 40 seconds left. VP. The onus is on you now to close out this round, send us to office and exhibition, and maybe then to overtime. W7M, can they avoid that from happening? Oh man, it's painful when you have to stand here and just beat to death the castle barricade as you watch the seconds ticking down at the top of your Get screen. A bit of help. A two-man job, why not? It goes through hard twice as quick, but oh, Pasha is ready, and I imagine they haven't droned him out here as well. They're a bit light in information. A little one okay. round gets one. Yeah, Five the second as well. Pasha's going nuclear this game. Another multi-kill up to 12 and six, and KZ has got it all to do with 10 seconds, it's simply not going to happen, which means we're going to have to see all 12 to get the conclusion of what is turning into an incredible skyscraper game. Make it another 4K. Take a bow, my son. The mental dexterity here from Virtus Pro is on display from a 5 0 deficit that brought this one right back now to 6 5 into the 12th round. As you said, we need all 12. W7M will still have match point as they've had now for quite a few rounds. They just can't find a way to get the job done. They've been stalled out and they've been forced into a tactical timeout as they've got one last opportunity to close it out before an overtime in which they would be at a heavily significant disadvantage as VP would have two defensive rounds. I think it's just balmy when I think about Nearly every single game I say, there's two halves to a game of Siege, and you can see a 6-0. You can see it, we, it could have very easily been a 6-0, right? Mm. We saw the 5-1 and just thought, man, VP have not turned up. They've got like five kills between them. Three of them were a potential 1v4 comeback that didn't materialize. It's just not looked good. And then you get into the second half, and admittedly in round eight, when they lost that round, I was like, okay, I think W7 then take the next one, that's it, job done. But VP have just gone from strength to strength. They look really sure of themselves at this point. And as much as Casey and Herds had an incredible first half, both getting up towards double digits, or at least very close to in that first half, they've been almost silent in the second. It was yeah, as well, moments like that. We saw from Pasha going for a massive flank coming on the backside of Drum. Understanding you need to be active, proactive on the defense. It can't just be a case of set sight and that's going to get the job done. Even still, even in this meta, you still need to be proactive. And that's what VP, I think, have done really, really well. 5-6 for W7M. Where has it kind of started? to go wrong. Attackers have located a bomb. Everything's been going wrong, it feels, in the second half. However, we've seen some very impactful tactical timeouts throughout this tournament. What I'm looking at in this round is back to Exhibition Office. We saw the Kai band away, and I thought maybe, like you're seeing in this round, we get them on playing the Bandit. The Tuber out and Bandit combo coming along here. Unless they've spotted it out on the side of W7M, 
could be absolutely huge. Well, I wonder if they have, Five because as you mentioned that, the four attacker repicks do come out, so they drop the double hard breach. They just go single now for Ace, of course. Philippox can still open up some key positions, say like VIP, which probably uh, could be dealt with. They've got uh, no secondary EMPs, though. They don't bring the Thatcher. Obviously, the Bandit, in terms of the three Shockwave batteries, I don't know where Always is going to place all of them, but clearly on the main breach inside of Office is going to be the key area for both the Bandit and the Tuber out, maybe VIP as well. Still, the W7M, with the way they've changed this lineup, I'm very curious to see what they're going to do. If it's going to be a case of trying to open something, then go for that massive rotate. We've already seen that so far in this half. Well, it's going to be a similar story as both teams showing respect to each other with the Zofia being brought along just in case there is a bandit on side. I was curious trying to see if we could see if the bandit was hidden away from the drones, for example, so they didn't see always, but I imagine they did at some point or another. This wall should get opened up now. They've got that secondary hardbridge gadget with the Captain Tower, of course. We've also got Zofia playing on the downstairs, but it's hers to fall. That is not the ideal start here. No, it's basically double tricked at this point with the uh, battery and all the Tuber out Zoto Canister. I'm not sure exactly what happened to the Zoto Canister, yeah. though. And it has actually been opened up. Not sure if this was a misplay from VP or a smart play from W7M. Either way, VIP has got an entry point. Minute 50 seconds left, and it means that W7M can draw their attention elsewhere, but they have lost the buck, and I think that's quite significant in terms of the vert play down mm. below. The big danger of something like this is you try and bolt through it, you're locked into that animation. You can just hold the angle as a defender a little bit further away on a pixel if you really want to, and it can do absolute wonders for you. Now I'm trying to get this wall opened up, and you've seen the Tuber really coming into effect here. Don't think they managed to get the bandit across to trick this one off, but at the very least, it will slow them down. Half the round is gone. They get a critical kill onto Dan. That's the warden offline. And now suddenly, Nade, if he's got any smokes left in back pocket, which he's got one, that becomes very impactful as the warden won't be around to counter it. Speaking of one, that was the last Zoto canister from Pasha. No more for him. So he's going to be able to now push away from these walls, or at least watch them as main breach gets opened up towards office. 60 seconds left. Job done in terms of the delay, I guess, if you will. W7N, they've got no sense of map control they're not coming in from drum side it's all about this main direct focus towards site they've opened up the doors and now they've got to walk through them and this is where both teams have fallen down is when it actually comes to trying to make something happen inside the map they barely set foot inside the map at all let's not forget here gadgets are coming in flashes are out as well but pasha absolute demon won't be stopped always into a second and sure there's two of them on the back of sight three players on Virtus pro still stand and i'll be feeling very very scared right now as nade and casey they may have got themselves in but joystick moves in can't find his man finally gets down nade's gonna complete but the final kill is there it's all they needed Virtus pro are sending us through to overtime oh and you can see what it means for them from a five nothing and They've made it now 6-6. Six, six. Wow. Huge turnaround for Virtus Pro. But how one-dimensional in the end from W7M. Again, where's the, the push from Drum? Where's the push from Drag? And nothing really coming. That makes it very easy for VP in terms of where they can train their eyes, Des. It's all just sort of that one focus push. In the end, it was even a double push in towards Office. Makes it all too easy. And VP, to their credit, again proactive. Ash has been insane. He's been absolutely nuts. I mean, for me, I said it was a game of two halves, but those two halves are from the same hole. They look no! exactly the same to me. <laughs> I love the passion so much. There's nothing like a comeback, though, isn't there? There is. There's oh, nothing it, get, like it gets the juices flowing, doesn't it? Staring it down the good. barrel. It was 5 nothing to W7M, and yeah. it was a very clean 5 nothing. But the reason why I say seven now. the two halves come from the same hole is because a lot of the rounds did feel very similar. It was quite one-sided. Again, we saw Virtus Pro basically running their head against a brick wall, trying to make the Northeast push work time and time and time again. W7M have just done exactly the same thing. And as you said earlier on, Virtus Pro start on the defense in overtime. This is looking ropey for W7M. They've got to pull out something special here. And for a second, I thought it might be the Monty. In fact, they changed back onto it. I'm a little bit skeptical of Monty at this tournament. We haven't seen him to really be used to great effect. A couple of rounds, Arakazi, I think about in his game earlier on, made great use of it. But outside of that, I've not seen too many strong cases of Monty being the defining factor in a round win. And I'm just nervous for a team that benefits off getting really quick entries and moving at pace. Monty is the exact opposite of that. 
I think a lot of pressure now on her to playing that Ash in terms of the firepower being brought to this round because Nade and JV, they've got their jobs on the hard bridge. KZ, of course, his job on the IQ to find that information to lead it. But the Montang, as you mentioned, does that then inadvertently slow them down. Could end up being a big win condition for them as well when it does come time to get towards site. Tier and Karaoke, and again, it can be quite versatile, similar to the Blitz. You can use them even still in that kind of sweep across, try and push through positions like Drum, then block out players. It's Pasha again, though. No surprises at all with the way that he has been playing in this match up to 15 kills And again, it's that proactiveness and I just said Hertz was a key player. He's dead. He's gone It just feels really sloppy because think about like I think that's even a couple of years ago on this map And teams would always have someone on the rappel on that south bout Supporting players that were looking to get a wall open or push down it in some way to stop that exact thing happening And in absence of having a player sat there well, what about a drone? Admittedly, it's easy to shoot out, but if it's gone, you know to be careful. And Pasha's run out there, timed it very well, fair play to him, and has been given an absolute freebie, and it feels like both teams on their defensive halves are getting away with murder against mm, the other side. That is true. Very bizarre. 90 seconds remain. No herds. Five versus four. Pasha drops down into Kitchen. He's got a bit of that vert play down on that first floor. What's the goal here with that Montaigne? You've brought it for a reason. Eventually does make its way through Drum. No one there, though, to meet him. Pasha's down below. So Felipox gets the free entry, could go in towards Makeup, and Geisha is all there, available as well for W7M. Virtus Pro, though, they've got vert play. But it's JV that finally gets something maybe oh. to unlock the round. And KZ, he goes to 15-2. Suddenly as well, now a four versus three with W7M in a really good opportunity to potentially flip the script. Pash is on the other side of the map, by the way. Oh, oh. I was going to say he was the one to watch out for. He could have been the backstab, so but whether he was caught on that final drone in W7M's back pocket, I'm not sure, but it was enough. They've got rid of the main man on the other side. Dan and Joystick have got to go absolutely nuclear, and it's not going to happen. W7M breaking that curse open, winning an attacking round win. If they can get rid of Dan, he's found one more. Oh, he's found two. Surely he can't do it all the way. There's a big bull in his face though with the shield and the Montang from Felipox JV he's got the gun in hand reinforced wall there to the left hand side Dan so low trying to just shoot oh, oh, oh. the elbow but it's the shield and then the melee from Felipox match point once again for W7M and they now go on to the defense what a turnaround after the VP onslaught to bring this gang back, winning six of seven rounds. W7M, they lost an opening player in Hertz. They lost a bit of their firepower. But in the end, the Montang, you could have maybe criticized it, but it became a it big factor around. in that round. <laughs> it absolutely has. It's a fair lot to start taking a list of the times we've seen Montes be really big and impactful because obviously he had the changes come in where it became a little bit easier to stagger. He wasn't quite a stalwart in the face of opposition anymore. It didn't take just an Oryx to be able to knock that shield out of the way. However, still having some impact as we've just seen in that round there and a couple earlier on today. Good stuff. Still, as you also said, broken the curse, attacking round one. I can just see a world now where Virtus Pro come in and do exactly the same thing back. Because <laughs> they've had several rounds of defense now where they've sort of built that momentum where Pash is firing on all cylinders when a team's a little bit more warmed into this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's impossible to predict, isn't it? Really hard. It, it feels like in the two halves, you had some predictability across rounds, yes, but yeah. in overtime, pff, throw it against the wall. I ain't got a clue. It has turned into a really fun game, though, hasn't mm, it? Because it started it. off looking like it was going to be a real letdown, a real disappointment as much as W7M would cook and looked great. The opening five rounds, I really expected this to be close, and it has finalized in that fashion. Who can take it out, though, at this point? Again, a reminder, this is VP's map pick, and if they do win this, they get to get back onto the defense and get a bit of a redemption round, if you will. I, mm. I, I'd love to see all 15. Oh, gimme. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Give me all 45. I'll take three maps of 15. No problem. I've been dying for it. Me and Tim are always like, give, 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 give. I'll take it for you happily, mate. I'm enjoying this. Looking at the lineup from VP, very different to everything we've seen come before. The Jackal, the Lion, the Dekebi, the Roam, the Hunter, Trifecta. That's exactly what you want when you've had Herds and KZ just handing it to you consistently on the defensive side. So I think actually, although it's a cautious lineup from Virtus Pro, it's a very sensible one. Yeah, love the Jackal here. Very curious to see how Joystick's going to be able to use that Inox scanner to just try and flush out key uh, positions that W7M will be holding. Yeah, Find a couple of footprints. They've got some good offensive power as well with the Ash, the Lion, the Dock B. Finally get that wall opened up. Okay, this is not too bad for Virtus Pro, though. Again, they were very slow when we think back to that very opening half two minutes. Bit of breach to try and obviously go from this uh, western side, sweep across from office and exhibition. The Pash is down below, actually, in a good spot, too. He's dying he to get, get swung. He could actually maybe catch them off guard, but the barbed wire does stop that from happening. 
And no buck on side as well. It's one worth noting. We saw a lot of buck. Obviously, you got shotguns in the back pocket, like joystick, for example. You've got the breaching charges, come well, breaching rounds. Oh, we by a default here. Lands in a spot. Just turns away at the last second. But without that vertical control, I think actually it's not going to be too unsettling for W7M. They can sort of wait here and just see what it is that Virtus Pro want to do. So not playing into the Roma Hunter game that Virtus Pro have brought along. They said, we ain't playing, guys. We're playing a different game. Come and join us when you're ready. Unless you're KZ, he's actually the one that's getting a little bit of aggressive in terms of his positioning over towards VIP. In those kind of moments, you just kind of like drop a brick and just think, whoa, that was quite good. Information though being discovered here by KZ. This is what you can gain from just lingering around, barricades up, just to block any kind of sight lines. If someone does play there in the late stages of this round, 60 seconds remaining. Mm, time is the concern now. He's getting to the last 60. Heard starts things off at Shepard to fall. Hard breach are down. Really got to see something special come out of the final four here in the closing 50. If not, Might's being a bit abused there as well. Not a lot of vision. Always gets a nice kill on to Nate. Joystick making the push up back stairs. There's barbed wire though in the way. Hasn't quite been influential with that Inox scanner. Again, the F not mine reveals his presence to him. Philippe Hawks playing that position. There's only 40 seconds remaining, Dez. Four versus four. Crucial round. I just love Joystick to scan any kind of feat at this point. Like it's information for your team. You've got all three in back pocket. Steve four. Ali and over the top from downtown. Always four. Balls at 4v3. It's looking a little bit ropey for VP. Another oh, one. Another another one. one. They get a second one. It's a double dunk. They've got one more to finish off. It looks like it's going to be W7Ms. It may have been hard for, but they've done enough to almost get us over the finish line. Pasha with 10 seconds, 10 HP, and a dream of four members of W7M to get through. It's simply not going to happen. Shot in the back, and W7M will take Skyscraper away from Virtus Pro. Just the kind of game where we had a script, then we, we ripped it apart, and then we put it back to together again that we ripped it apart and in the end though the original script of W7M who started so strong they have found a way to close it out taking the map pick of Virtus Pro they had that 5-0 start there as they looked absolutely clinical then VP were able to emulate what we saw in that first half they were sensational on the defense sent us to overtime they had the double defense they couldn't get the job done 8-6 in the end W7M started strong finished strong that's what that's really matters most, right? Starting strong, finishing strong. Gave themselves a little bit of room for when things were slipping away from them. Have managed to hold on, but I'm just excited to see what happens on map two, because at this yep. point, God knows which way it goes. Yeah, don't go too far. After the break, we head to cafe.
We continue to say it every single series, but this one pretty much tops it off. You cannot count any team out on a defense, no matter what it looks like. 5-1 first half from W7M. They demolished VP. But then we go to overtime, Jesse. Overtime. I don't even know how that's possible. There's a big picture first, but how about we start first half? Yeah, let's start with the first half and talk about kind of what went wrong. Because I was very concerned for VP. I did. I gave the highlight before the match started. I showed you how W7M played. And they played identical to, in this game to how they played yesterday. They're going to be aggressive. They're going to be forward. They're going to want to fight you early. And I talked about how Bleed, they had a pretty good job of droning those players out, finding those frags early. VP couldn't do that. Every single round, time after time, they were running out of drones way before they got into those gunfights. They didn't have the pinching players. They couldn't cut people off when they were trying to go for those early round clears, and they struggled. We saw W7M demolish and because of that. Both KZ and Herds did what they did and found those early round frags, which set us up for a second half, which looked like it would have been over super quick. Yeah, I mean, talking about the second half, what's interesting, what I love about Siege is both these teams play defense completely different. You have W7M that plays that aggressive defense. They're, they're almost putting you on defense at that point. But VP, they play a defense where they are now forcing you into their gunfights, into their line of fire. You see teams that will typically hold shrine, will hold drum, but VP plays all the way in the back. They want to play in Geisha. They want to play all the way in the back of gold and just have you come in and fight them. And we were seeing that a lot and that was favoring them. So it just goes to show, sure, this is a defensive sided half clearly, but both teams played it very differently and executed their defenses perfectly. Now, one of the things that stood out in the first half alone, let alone the second half, were how many many multi-kills. There were oh. four multi-kills in the opening four rounds, but it didn't stop there. There were seven in total, just on my calculations, and I didn't get to watch every round in its fullest. There were seven out of 14 rounds. No, I mean, Herds, in the beginning, I mean, you were talking about they need to find a way to shut down Herds. The opening round, Herds gets a 4K. Then we go into the second round, Philly Pox with a 3K. Then we go into the third round. Herds, again, they're all collaborating, they're all working together, but then KZ ends up getting netting a 3K. Then <laughs> it goes into a fourth <laughs> round, and yep. KZ gets a 4K. And it goes into what you were saying, that VP just didn't have the intel, or they didn't have the man. And that's what I was saying. I wasn't seeing the droning. I wasn't seeing the team play. I wasn't seeing the trade potential, which is why we saw those multi-kills. But VP got a few multi-kills of their own, and particularly Pasha went absolutely insane. Twice he had 4Ks. I was sitting next to Pengu in the green room. I took off my headphones, I leaned over. That guy's on my fantasy team! <laughs> <laughs> Massive game from Pasha, specifically on that defense. Had a huge huge couple of rounds there, always going for those flanks, always trying to get aggressive. We saw him extending into office on that Fenrir, really got a ton of value, almost doing what W7M did against them at some parts of that game. Really impressive stuff coming through. Wasn't enough to bring them all the way, unfortunately, but still, you got to talk about him having a huge game individually. No, Pasha was absolutely having a dominant performance, and like you were saying, those flanks that he was hitting, I think he netted three of those flanks that was grabbing those kills. There was a round in round 13 where JV92 ends up shutting him out, but he initially led the game getting that first round pick. And it's in that moment where you're playing those lurk flank roles, whatever that is, you have to know the right timing. And that's the hard part is knowing the right time. You got to think you've already had the success two to three times in a row. How can you play it differently? And in that round 13, like I said, he started it out perfectly, gets the free kill. I would have much rather have seen him play back on site with his team, even the man count, but he didn't. He tried to go for that flank yet again for the fourth time and JV92 completely shut that down. And JV92 actually ended up getting a 3K that round in general. <laughs> to it. But yeah, I mean, in those moments, in those lurk worlds, you just got to know when the right timing is and just kind of play off of it or you aren't flanking at all. Do you think it, that just unraveled the game for them in overtime? I, I definitely think it didn't put them in a great position, whereas if you're already in an even man count, stay that even man count because then it just comes down to a trade game. But then once you lose that man count, if then if the next gunfight happens, you only got one chance for a trade potential. Yeah, and unfortunately, look, that's just the way the cookie crumbles and you do have to move on. Speaking of moving on, it's time for Cafe. Let's talk about this map in particular because because we now move into territory away from Skyscraper that kind of confused us a little bit. Yep. Do we move to something a little bit more solid? Much more solid, much more expected. This is a map that W7M will always pick if it's open for them. They have won Cafe more than any other map this season, holding a 7-1 record, only losing to FaZe Clan once in the BR6 Grand Finals. Well, they feel very comfortable here. It is their favorite map, and it's going to be a tough one for Virtus Pro. Now, they do play it uh, occasionally as well for VP as well. Um, it's just their win rate isn't quite as good. One in four this season, losing twice in Atlanta to NIP and against BDS, which knocked them uh, out in the major. So recent results aren't great. You go back farther, it doesn't get too much better for them. Um, this will be a tough map. 
this will be a very tough match for Virtus Pro. To add on to that, I mean, I am worried about VB coming here. You bringing up that NIP match, they were struggling with that aggression. Now, in terms of just the last map, how they were playing their defensive side, they were playing it, forcing W7M to come into their line of sight. Yeah. But with how Cafe works, it's very hard to make that happen. You almost have to be on that aggressive play style. So I really want to see VP not play that so passive aggressive place on defense and really bring what W7M has been bringing and stopping them at all fronts of trying to get in because that's the correct way, in my opinion, of playing Cafe, especially the top floor, is if you can stop them from coming in every entry point and you will make it 10 times harder than just playing it back and being shot back from a window or something like that. Jess, I'm going to ask you this because Lax has just made that point. Is it going to be possible for VP to beat W7M on their own turf, and if we, let's let's just hypothetically say they move into that kind of play style, mm -hmm. do we see them potentially pushing us to border? I think it's possible. I think it's in the cards, right? I mean, this is a map that I think it's a little bit harder to get as aggressive on early. I mean, you're gonna, if you're if you're extending on the roam, you definitely can do that. And if the enemy team is trying to clear you out, you can do a lot of crazy things that we saw from W7M on the defense. But it's, it's a little bit harder sometimes to go for, uh, as big of moves just because you've got to go up those staircases you've got to make those flanks so i think that can be uh working in vp's favor a little bit but i mean it's gonna be tough like uh, this felt like a series where virtus pro had to win their own map pick it's crazy we're talking about a series where vp yeah. have to win skyscraper border to uh to take it home but um unfortunately that's where they're at and they lost map one so this will be tough last chance for a prediction you know, just, just to go against it, I'm going to say VP runs away with this. They're oh, going to figure geez. out what they need to do from the last round. Hey, we were counting. I counted them out the last game, Everyone and then they brought it out. back. You know, it, it came to small, minute things that completely overturned that game for W7M. I think that they can figure out what they need to do here, maybe play a little more aggressive. I think it is going to come down to who wins the attacking side. Well, look, if VP do manage to do that, the unthinkable almost, they will force us into border, but we need to get this map underway. It's Cafe, and it is, of course, Dez and Xenox to run you through the action. Yeah, I agree with Laxing. I think it is going to probably come down to who can be a little bit more prominent on the attack in a meta that clearly has been very defensive sided. You need to win those attacking rounds earlier, even better than it relieves a bit of that pressure. Mm. <laughs> It's the scrappy one because we've seen very different flavors of cafe over the last few days. The series earlier on, very attacker leaning. Previous games, extremely defender leaning. So there is the possibility that attack can go well on this map. It's just normally assumed to be unlikely. No inverters pro, I think back of the VP of old from a couple of years ago, to be fair, not the best at attacking onto this map, but obviously the meta has changed. The team is now basically under a completely different uh, group. Obviously most of the X team empire roster are now playing here with the addition of Pasha. So it can be a very different story. For me, it'll come down somewhat to the bands and how we see the first couple of rounds go. Very similar to one skyscraper. It is always going to be a game of two halves, but I think the start of this one might be a little bit different. So I think W7M will go very aggressive on jump outs, on spawn peaks, on everything else just trying to disrupt Virtus Pro early on. And the similarities to Skyscraper already beckoning with a double Grim Band. So first on Skyscraper, mm. now also here on Cafe. And again, also W7M will be starting on the defense too. So really, it's going to be that same kind of storyline first half in terms of W7M very likely to rack up a lot of round wins, get out to that four or five nothing lead. You then, of course, can no longer in this meta then put a line through this game because in VP are more than capable of replicating that on their own defense as we evidently saw on Skyscraper skyscraper so far really no surprise with these bands ying azami and then the fenria so I, I do like this so far from both of these two teams we saw of course grim did get banned out back on skyscraper as well i think he's quite prominent here on <laughs> cafe we go again says jv yeah again probably more referring to the azami being banned away i think he really wants to play it and isn't being given the chance to because virtus pro like no i don't think he will Fenrir being taken away is a good one, though, because we saw that picked up a few times on the previous map as well. That's it's true. such a headache for a team that wants to move at pace, so it does unlock that a little bit more. And, of course, the physical obstruction of his army not being present is going to help, but it does mean you may well get tortured by things like the Solus if it comes down to it. Looking back at the kind of history of this map as well, VP played it six times last year, only won it once. Not exactly their most successful map pick. Obviously, we spoke about Border and Skyscraper being two maps that debuted here for the first time in over nine months. But this one, I think, a little bit more evidence for W7M to go off of. And therefore, I think they might have a bit of a smoother ride, at least to start things off. Yeah, potentially the reason why W7M have gone ahead and picked this for their map pick. So it is, of course, mm. W7M's pick. When we kind of look at Cafe so far at 60 Invitational, 24, 60 rounds played, 55 defensive win rate. But it's actually 
uh, as a stat that you probably on surface paper shouldn't really value because it's taking into account mining, which only has a 33% defense win rate. Outside of that though, 60, 60 and 67%. So I argue it's probably closer to that 60% defensive win rate, which again goes probably close to the vast majority of maps. Cafe has always been one that has played in that fashion. Uh, Rapid start though from Virtus Pro. I imagine W7M. You said they were going to get aggressive on the defense. Well, I think VP were ready for it. They were. They've come in ready again. I've said this a few times over the tournament, but Brazilian Cafe is very aggressive. Nate's still giving it a go, even when they're down two members. Still wants to try and find something to even the odds out, but he's given absolutely nothing. Dream star for VP, though. 30 seconds in, two players dead. Oh, certainly not going to scoff at that. Yeah, certainly not, especially on a site that has a 67%. It is the site cocktail. W7M go aggressive early, get punished. Great start for Virtus Pro. If they can find an early attacking round, go one nothing up on the attack in a series that again has already been super defensive sided. Boy, does that relieve a bit of that mental stress in the long run. It just means that, hey, we can release that pressure valve a little bit. We've already kind of got one. It means we've got plenty of rounds to find a second. I think two attacking rounds will be more than enough really in this half. Great start. And more importantly, they're not getting over Zalas. They've got a two-player lead, but it's all about going back to the system. Go to the checklist, play the drone game, clear out these areas. We've got a five on three advantage, but let's not sell it away. That's not indeed. I love the setup that comes out in this site as well. Like we haven't seen this in a long time. It's a very old school setup coming out from W7M. The castle and the Aruni combo making it hard for you to destroy those castle barricades at range without first blowing up through the Aruni laser gate, as we'd say. Normally see a shield placed down on Pixel, for example, as well. Haven't seen that in this round because of the uh, secondary gadget rotations that we saw come through for a number of operators across last year. But otherwise, things do look kind of normal and a bit old school and Virtus Pro are like that. They're a team that likes the old school way of playing things quite a lot of the time. Being in a five versus three though, the last you know, 90 seconds have passed and I was going to say nothing has really happened. And then Pastor obviously shuts me up at the exact moment I open my gob and gets a kill to make it a, a 5v2 down to a 5v1. And Casey's just like, yeah, okay, this round sort of right off. Yeah, aggressive angle from Nay, basically just giving the balcony to get a better Attackers angle looking up towards top red. But alas, eventually does get taken down. Five versus one is set, means the likelihood for KZ is slim to none. And the none is indeed correct. Flawless start for Virtus Pro. What a response. And honestly, the fact they've gone and done it in the opening round, the fact they were also ready for the aggression from W7M means they've done their homework. More importantly as well, when you consider that they're in the overtime on Skyscraper, they had double defense, threw that away. Mentally, it's very easy to drop your heads a little bit and feel like, oh, we've, we've, we've dropped one, we've wasted one. It was our map pick. We had every chance to win it. The fact they've come out straight away, Cafe, first round, big win. Massive win. Really at the back of those two early kills as well, which is why I think W7M won't feel too rattled. They'll kind of go, look, we tried to get a bit cheeky. We paid the price. Let's replay the site. We can go for exactly the same lineup again, which is what we can see they're doing on our second monitor over here. I do not I'm going to see a lot of aggression very quick here. No, very curious to see what W7M do in terms of the response now in this second round where I think that maybe they want to just reel it in just ever so slightly. Don't need to get too overzealous to begin these rounds. They've already shown enough on the skyscraper map that they've got the ability to really control defensively. They repeat now for Cocktail. Again, I think they'll have that primary, pretty much similar set up over towards the Gar shot where you've got those cast barricades, the Rooney Sawyer gates. Was, you guys like to say that laser gates. <sighs> no one else can say it. It's a British thing. Cannot, cannot say it. British. What? I can't say the laser. I thought you were taking probably. the piss out of the way that I said cannot, and I was like, have I said something wrong there? Absolutely. Can I not speak English? <laughs> where is Mr. Gus? Go, where's Mr. Laser Gates himself? Where's he gone? You've run away somewhere. We're not going to get a cameo to say it, teach you how to say it the right way. So we'll just we'll work through it together. Don't worry. It's like laser gate. Laser gate. So the way you say like laser is like A, but Tim says A. A. Rather than A. Laser. A. But laser gate. Laser gate. Located by attackers. Gate. Right. Yeah, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, 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 keep, we'll keep working on that one. We'll keep working on that one as we go into the second round. W7M, of course, they've kind of reeled it in a little bit, haven't they, where it's now probably not as much of that super aggressive jump out play or anything along those lines where they're trying to get in the face of Virtus Pro. Instead, they're more so just holding these kind of site positions, especially around Pixel, Top White. They've even got JV on the stairs itself. One as well over towards Plank. So, yeah, very much a bit more of a sort of bunk it in defense here from W7M. Still, as I said, that same setup. They haven't gone aggressive. Things are looking okay, chill, at least for now. 
Confirmed. All good until the shooting starts, though. Halfway through the round, nothing has exploded off the back of it. The decay is going to be somewhat limited with the mute on side as well, of course. Standing inside the radius of a mute jammer means that you don't get any phone calls. So you're safe from the decay noise at the very least. Doesn't mean that those charging at you as a result of those calls coming in won't be putting your way through your fallback. Got to recall, as we've kind of mentioned a couple of times back on Skyscraper as well, the slow kind of entry playstyle of Virtus Pro, well, it's come to fruition a little bit here in this second round. Just over 60 seconds left, still no real entry either. I think Joystick's just finally made his way in towards the car shop. They've had to deal with these uh, Soya gates along with the castle barricades. Dan gets the opening kill, but the trade does come back at the very least quickly from KZ onto Pasha. Under 60 seconds, now under the four versus four, looking to get a bit of that lounge control. Oh, and this is really a, a critical part of it, getting inside a piano and at least using that as a basis to push through white, for example, and almost sideswipe the defenders that are holding much further out towards the east side is the critical part. But the way I always used to describe Catfish, you can imagine a diagonal line being drawn from bottom left to top right corner, and it just moves across with the attackers as they take more and more ground, and you start to have to move everything. So now Joystick's able to step across and get this white control that I spoke about. That will let others on the top side of things going in towards bar push across much easier because that threat of Joystick is always going to be there always into another a 4v1 what a great start to cafe for Virtus pro and it feels like we're gonna have an attack leaning cafe yeah i mean well, let's calm the horses a little bit because right now it just feels like Virtus pro have found a couple of avenues and i do wonder if we get attack in response because it's a bit of a rough start defensively for w7m the fact that they've given up two cocktail rounds again it is the best statistical defensive win rate site on this map at 67 percent so far throughout this tournament and they've lost it both to start here for Virtus pro now, to be fair, I have called Fresh out on that. I think it's incorrect. Because me and Tim have cast it a lot, bar cocktail, and it's a 71 now. I think it's wrong. Because we've cast well, a hell of a lot of it. Cafe. We saw seven rounds of bar and cocktail and not a single defensive win uh, defense no! won in really? that time. Yeah. So now you're saying Fresh is wrong. It, no! I think Fresh is wrong. Okay. I've told him. I've called him out. <laughs> yeah, fair play, though. I'll give a shout out to Fresh. He's obviously not working this week, but he's doing tons of stats for this, and he's being a real savior. So yeah. God bless. Either way, a massive start for Virtus Pro. 2 nothing here on Cafe. The map pick of W7N. A response has clearly been in effect after they did lose out on Skyscraper when they stormed back. The 5 nothing start in favor of W7M. VP brought it all the way back, sent us to overtime only to fall short at the finish line to give W7M that first map, to give them their map. But now the response has come through. 2 nothing start, most of those as well being on attack to nothing. That is exactly the start they would have dreamt of mm. in response to that opening map. Oh, I've changed headsets now. It's the cable's like five times shorter. <laughs> so I'm just like, I'm gonna like hold the box and be like, hello. Oh, brilliant. On we go, as you say. Sorry, as you were saying. <laughs> that just really amused me. <laughs> That's why it made me laugh so yeah, The shortest cable that I've ever seen. I wish I could show everyone right now, but it, I don't even think you'd be able to put it behind you. No, this one's gonna have to stay in front. I'm breaking now. I'm doing a bit of a broadcast faux pas by having it in front of me when we come to the camera next time, but it'll be fun. We roll with it. We move onwards. We yeah. go and the show must continue. I mean, that's what VP's basically done in this game so far. They move forward. They I kind love of just your left. transitions. You love like, just sweeping the conversation over. It's beautiful. It's like speaking off smooth transitions. Well, you're talking about moving on. Well, yeah, look on. Moving on. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, look, they've, they've clearly just left Skyscraper behind them. They, they haven't yeah. kept that focus on. I think, you know, it, it's been said, you really do need to just kind of let go of those bad games, those bad rounds, those bad maps, move forward, new map, new focus, and VP have started really, really well. For W7M, I mean, they've obviously brought a little bit of aggression to begin in that opening round, but two kills through two rounds is a stark contrast to what we saw from them on Skyscraper. Indeed. And they carry on this break as well, then it'll be a quick timeout coming in from W7M. As I said, normally if you see three rounds fall away from you, you have that timeout, you have the reset, you get to rethink things through. If it does carry on at this pace, I think W7M will want to break that momentum and have that conversation for a good 45 seconds. The big thing for me, though, is again, as much as we want to give the plaudit to the VP, it's that slow, steady play style. Maybe, though, especially in a map like Cafe, that could be a reason why it's a bit more prominent. Cafe, at times, can be quite slow going. It is a slower-paced map. And so that actually might play into VP because as we said earlier as well in the broadcast, when they do enter, they are very efficient. Over 50%, there's Joystick, opening kill. No response either from KZ. Eventually though, looking to find that kill onto Joystick in shot, but guess what? Through the wall and through the heart, 4v3 again here for VP. W7M can just not find any kind of consistency on the defense. They can't, no, it's really bizarre, isn't it? Across the two maps, the disparity that we're seeing, the difference in the teams and literally changing the map has flipped things on its head. The attack are running 
running right here. Whereas on the previous map, it was all about the defense having an awful lot of fun. So up and down, up and down is the only way that I can describe it between the two of them. We've got to really see W7 and get warming into it. Instead, I think we might see a timeout after this round. For now, though, Virtus Pro have got all their players all around Cigar. They're pushing forward this top floor together. And really, the zone up here left to defend. The problem is they've got 30 seconds and still three players on the downstairs. The pace they now need to move at may force some errors out that may help W7M get this over the line. A couple of smokes available through Dan on the Brava to maybe just help out, block a few sight lines. Big kill onto Herds, because I certainly would have still given W7M every chance on a three versus throw nays wait for that drop down gets a view from above always gets the kill and we are seeing a very dominant virtus pro right now we are extremely dominant and this is just building into an incredible series like back at this point on the first map we were like oh vp oh. they just haven't turned up like your first game of the day not quite in it and they get back in the second half now they're running away with the start of the second dare and i'll say i'm at a point where i'm saying please w7 and let's see you wake up into this game as well let's not see you fall asleep by the wayside Hopefully they can battle their way back in, but I will reserve comment or too much judgment until we get that second half, because again, things can transform massively. It certainly can, but right now, the fact that VP is doing it on the attack means that I take this scoreline a little bit more seriously than, say, if it was a W7M defensive onslaught in a similar fashion to Skyscraper that we saw earlier in that opening map. So the fact that it's VP attack... Now, mind you, Dez, we've seen crazier things happen. You said it early. This could end up being attacker side cafe which i think would be maybe the first attacker side of game at this tournament if uh -huh. it does eventuate in that fashion it's building that way very quickly isn't it yeah here we go into the next round then Got the remaining. maestro coming on side again i've remarked on this a few times today but sometimes you've seen warden drops Five away and the maestro brought along kind of as a, a pseudo sort of warden it's not exactly the same obviously it's a static gadget you can put down it and give you a lot of information but it's also the fact that it can th see through smokes and through light screens and whatever else might get brought along so handy for that purpose and also let's not forget our Older, absolute beast. Two brow bought though, which is a little bit surprising. Yeah, very curious. To Not see paired up with electric, which is interesting because yeah. you normally see that. So here it's a pure. I wonder if it's like an, a positional denial of say like a top red position. Throw those Zoto canisters in around that area, maybe on the doorway, makes it difficult to push through. Maybe in towards the cigar shop, considering this again his cocktail. I am absolutely curious to see how Nate is going to utilize those canisters onto the roof immediately. Four Virtus Pro looking to find four attacking rounds in a row. That is the task at hand for them. They brought the Osiris as well. Let's see if that's going to be utilized along with again the Brava from Dan who's been able to get four kills so far and he's not the only one. Joystick also and always both have four to go alongside him. So a nice team performance so far for Virtus Pro on the attack of Cafe. The Osteron side is obviously the key thing you're looking at as the agent of chaos on the Virtus Pro side. Where they choose to employ it, where that shield goes down, everything will be based around this. Of course, diffuser in back pocket for Shepard as well. Again, it orchestrates everything. So follow the shield and you'll know what it is Virtus Pro are trying to achieve and where the focus will come in. I'll tell you what, if they win this round, Tim will be ecstatic. Three more bar cocktail losses, and that'll be in heaven. <laughs> I think we went, then we'll actually fall below like a 25% defensive win rate on this site. And surely at some point, Teams will learn. It's not the site to go to on this map. Yeah, right now, W7M, though, not learning their lessons. They have gone for it one more time. If they lose it here, surely can't close out the half looking to go back. Uh, clutch drone has been spotted. Banky gets way in towards uh, Piano. No one really there in response, though, to deal with said clutch drone. And there's no one actually holding Pixel. One in towards Washroom. Two brow as well in towards Freezer. And Dan now makes his way in through Bar. I spotted one. They know one's inside of Freeze. They know one, no doubt, is going to be in here behind Cocktail. Don't actually see, but they know from the shot. They know that the fact the gadget is there. Someone is going to be playing in behind it. You've got to try and force the player out. Is now the difficulty. But down to the last six. And they haven't made these players move too much. But at least on the top down, we can see this diagonal line being formed across the map here as well. W7M squeezed in towards Leapop. the southeast corner. A C4 from below as they try and step their way through. Piano, a good kill coming out for W7M. Yeah, he was just holding down below for quite some time. At least the last 30 to 40. Seconds. Here, here come the Talon Shields here from Shepard to get that plant down They've and use that it. shield behind. If this sticks, it's going to be a very difficult round for W7M. Oh, they need the denial. Attack does not come through. Sorry. There was a Nitro Cell available from Nay, but nowhere to be seen. Stuck inside a freezer. They can play the Skylight if they want. They can play 
uh, basically red. They can play second Balk. I mean, this is a really difficult scenario now for oh, W7M. This is going to be so hard for them to win this round from here. And the Black Shepherd get onto the balcony as well and get a shield down. So he controls everything. There is nothing they can do. It's down and always causing all the chaos. Those three kills flurry through for them incredibly quickly. Looks to be a 4-0 deficit and three attempts at Bar and Cocktail. Every single one won by the attackers. Dan's on for a triple kill. He's 7-0 on the map. This is literally a mirror of what we saw in the first half of Skyscraper. What a series this is turning into. W7M are human. They are prone to having these kind of errors. They lost the bleed yesterday on a map. Right now, they are looking like they're getting decimated. Avertis Pro looked at in total control. And it makes you kind of wonder, have we got the right map bands in the right order? The right <laughs> it's crazy, in the right isn't way? it? Because the fact that W7M have sent us to the cafe, they just look completely impotent. They do. And the timeout's coming now. I mean, I thought it would come in after the last round, but they played the same site twice. I thought, ah, oh, maybe there's another site we can go to. No, they went back to Bar on Cocktail and lost it. So, and, and what did they bring? They brought the Tuber out. Did we even see the Zoto Canisters? What was the effect of no. that? Instead, they're just sitting back. They allowed the entry in. The awesome win condition. There was no response, no Nitrosol thrown over to deal with that. The only way I could see it really being used, and we've seen teams use it a couple of times so far in the competition, is around the bathroom wall just to slow the opening of that wall down. But it was never a focus for Virtus Pro. That, that, that kind of like 45 degree like diagonal line that cuts through the map and moves across. As soon as they moved the front line far enough that they had control of bar, for example, and there was no massive threat coming from bathroom. They couldn't play inside of storage because of the piano control. It was so easy for the Osses to get in and go, well, you guys have moved so far forward that I'm not under immediate threat here. It was just all too easy to step forward, get the diffuser down, and then even step back and get a second shield down that covered off towards New Balcony. I was just like, yeah, it, it looks too easy. And we said this about uh, about W7M on Skyscraper at the start. There was no real challenge coming in from Virtus Pro. They could barely get inside the building. Here, it just feels like W7M are offering almost no resistance. Ash is loving it. <laughs> He's having a good time. May not be shining this map compared to what the way he was in the previous one, but that's the beautiful thing about strong teams is they've got multiple players that can step up when you need them. Out of the tactical timeout now from W7M, and they've given up finally on Bar Cocktail, and they'll <laughs> go down towards Kitchen, Service and Cooking in the fifth round. Two more rounds now to play out. It has been an onslaught from Virtus Pro. And I remain. think Cafe actually suits their playstyle perfectly when you consider they're slow to enter, Attack but when they out. do enter, they're successful. Cafe is a certain map that really does not play super fast all the time when it comes to these attacking teams there's a lot of that kind of stall out you got players that are trying to obviously deal with a lot of utility clear out key positions and as you said that kind of diagonal sweep across you're not always going to get that super fast play style that sort of other maps might present say a chalet or a border for example so mm. i think vp have got a good map here despite the fact it was picked by w7m and I think they might be setting up for a bakery attack, considering what I can see with Dan on the Brawl. They've also brought the Montang. The Ram is a very good option here as well on this particular mm. site in terms of that vert pressure that you can get over towards, say, mining and train. I really prefer bringing it something like a sledge or a book for a few reasons. One, it just opens up so much to the floor in a long straight line. You need those big long angles onto the downstairs to restrict the defenders properly. But it's also a really safe option. The risk of something like a sledge is you have to be there for the floor to open. A C4 can be enough to take you out. And while Buck can be a little bit more secure, you're kind of stood there with your gun out. If you've got the right angle, you're being blown up. Whereas a gadget running across the floor, okay, cool, you destroy that. So what? I've got more in that pocket that I can throw out once again. Just love ram for the site. Yep. Opening kill, of course, for VP again. Very successful. Nice stuff from JV, though, not as successful. I actually think that might have hurt. Philippe Pox has taken some damage anyway. Docker B Logic Bomb goes out. Over 90 seconds left in the round. Good little clearer up above from Virtus Pro. Not overly focused on the site, at least not just yet. Really playing into this vert, especially even with the Montang from Shepard. Now over to the wards, the hallway. He's got himself into an intriguing position where there's a gas babe in his face over towards Pixel, despite the fact this is Kitchen. <laughs> and he's just like, no problem. I'll open up a diversion. We'll just walk around. Redirected traffic on the motorway. Easy peasy. Shepard carries on his march down white. Whenever I see this, by the way, I always think back to a really old G2 versus Na'Vi game where Pengu was playing on, I want to say, Monty, and it was Kendrew for Na'Vi at the time playing on the Clash of slowing the Monty down the whole way of the white stairs, and they ran the slot down to 30 seconds and managed to win as a result. This round is starting to feel a little bit slow in the same way. 60 seconds to go or so into a four versus four, and Herds, an absolute titan, and they've shot the Monty in the back as well. This is more of what you expect to see. Herds having such a great last map, really putting in a shift here for his team in this round. 
which means Virtus Pro might finally suffer a loss on Cafe. Yeah, we'll see. He's still a bit of time here. There was still one bo uh, Boogie Auto Breacher available from Pasha. He opts to not use it. Does actually still have the Diffuser in hand. Always makes his way down Brown. And Pasha does get a kill onto JV. Brings it back to a two versus three. Hurts, does he finally make his move though? Pasha opens up the floorboard and there's a man down below in Nade. Always. He's alive though for now in a 1v3, but he doesn't have kit. It's upstairs, it's on a second floor, yeah. and that's going to be the end of the round. Finally, W7M on the board. What I look back at is on the previous map, it only took one round in that first half though for them to have a little bit of breathing room to completely turn things around. And that could be the round for W7M. They need to give them that breathing room going into the second half and turn things around. Again, at this point, it is so difficult to predict, but much better. Really hurts being the player there, I thought, that made that round for W7M, holding aside a reading. No real awareness it felt from VP that he was inside of there because three players all pushed the exact same angle. There was no backstab coming in from Snow Door. There was no use of the verticals to try and cut him off. He was very much unchallenged in there, which suggests they weren't aware he was a thing. Well, I've just seen the site that's been locked in for our final round of this half. A mm. bit of a surprising one. Spoiler, we're going to mining. Yay! Why not? Better though from W7M. In the uh, the Monte was okay, but obviously shot the back by JV. Just timing things over towards White Stairs. Obviously trying to just push in towards Reading and that was the last map, wasn't it? I think I saw him do that. <laughs> I don't know if he might have just done it again. Every time he loses, maybe he feels he's got to hit his desk. I don't know. I think it's just, the, it's just the same animation again. <laughs> you might start wondering at some point why his hand hurts if it carries on with the round losses tallying up, but thankfully not too many having to be pounded into the desk at the moment because they are still very far in the lead. For W7M, I think it would feel like a bit of a smash and grab if they can get this round on the board as well. The 4 2 half, it still feels painful to lose four defensive rounds on Cafe, but you'll take it given how things have been going and given how dominant Virtus Pro were for those first few rounds. I think after four rounds have been concluded, there were only five kills on the side of W7M. That just gives you the idea of how strong they were for those first few. I'm curious to see what W7M are going to be cooking here as we go to mining. Not really the conventional of sites when it comes to cafe and only brought out at times when teams have kind of workshopped something and they've got a bit of an idea. See with their lineup as well, bringing that vigil, herds up above top floor, coming out of cocktail and he gets the kill onto Joystick. And that puts a bit of pressure now onto Virtus Pro. They've already lost one. There goes your Ash. There goes a bit of entry power. And you've got to hunt down a Vigil. There's an Oryx as well and Philippe Pox. There's going to be a lot, a lot of map room here from W7M. And that's the problem. You can spend forever chasing him down if you're not careful. Like, Again, I think when SSG played, we saw Forrest on a Solus up here, drew two minutes from their opponent. And they were chasing him down forever. And it was like, cool, you guys are aware that you've gone one for one and lost two minutes attacking into Kitchen on the downstairs. It was horrific. And obviously, this is a mining site, not having to go through all three floors of the map. But it's still going to be a bit of a headache as long as he's able to keep on roaming around. Oh, Interesting to see Philippe Ox there. Just thought about maybe going for a little swing outside Bakery. And that's where the Oryx is playing right now. Has finally moved off of that position. It is open for Virtus Pro if they want to opt to go in towards from that entrance. Minute and 30 seconds remaining. W7M with the advantage. Looking to find their second Rebound. round of the half and doing so a little bit better here. They've got some good control. I like what they've brought here for the mining defense where they're really opting for that full map wide all mm. floor kind of pressure. The Oryx down below oh, at the very bottom. The Vigil up the top and that makes it really difficult for VP. It's something I commended her for last lap is knowing when to fall back as well. He's just dropped out a cocktail as we hit the sort of 110 mark. Before that, it was taking out drones. It was just reminding them, hey, I am here. And look at the drone count in the top two. left corner of your screen. They've only got two left. And that was just to try and push their way through the top. And you can even see with the shots being fired round corners, they're not even fully convinced it was still clear at that point. So job done as far as W7M are concerned. Really good defense coming in here. Just kind of feels like Virtus Pro's amazing attack in the opening four rounds has certainly stagnated here as we get to the yeah. close of this opening half. W7M. They've just found their big boy pants and started to put them on and start to get involved here on Cafe. And that's a dangerous sign, a dangerous game to be playing. If you're VP, 30 seconds left. It's going to be that sort of almost 20 second meta style attack push in towards mining. Good start though from Shepard. The trade immediately from Nade and trades just about everywhere on the map. Of course, W7M, they've got the numbers. They'll happily play the trade game. Oh, the flick and he misses a little dodge down to the right from Herds is enough. 
shepard has got it all to do with 10 seconds, seconds though, and the problem is they're long gone. Nade's working his way up red here. Five Probably going to find go. himself taken out. Philippe Box has dropped as well. They know where the man is. In through the softball. Yeah, Shepard ball. <laughs> I mean, for a second, the fact that he shot back and got one. If Nade had fell as well, that would have been a real steal round coming out for VP. So they get two to close the half out. Good for the momentum, great for the scoreboard as well. Oh. Does this end up being attack aside though, Dez? It's bonkers, isn't it, honestly? I think, like I said, after five kills across four rounds, that's a little bit of a stinger. And to now smash and grab two rounds is absolutely enormous. We've got Jesse to call in, but let's get him in because I'm sure he's got his own thoughts. I very much do, guys, and I wanted to come to you with a little bit of a prediction, because in that first map, we saw the second half come alive for Pasha. He popped off and carried VP with their momentum to bring that game all the way to overtime, and I think there's reason to believe he might pop off in the second half of this map as well. The last time that Virtus Pro played Cafe was against BDS at the Atlanta Major, and Pasha, on their defensive half, went a monster 9-3. and three. He had an incredible half. In my opinion, it was his best performance throughout the Atlanta to major he was getting aggressive jumping out a window so i just want to give people a heads up he may be doing that again on cafe so keep an eye on pasha it's already looking pretty good for virtus pro in that first half but if there's anybody who's going to propel them to that final round if there's anybody who's going to push them over the edge i think it's going to be him Thank you so much, Jesse, for that little call in. Indeed, I agree with that. I think Pasha as well, when you kind of think back to Skyscraper, heavily mm. influential. He's done it once, why not again? Yeah, why not again? And right now, for Virtus Pro, it just comes down to defense. They go straight to Kitchen here to start for the seventh round. Opening round of the second half of the W7M, of course, winning the last two rounds. Now under the attack themselves. A nice little mix here on the attack. No hard breach, so you don't really need it anyway for this particular site. And they've got the secondaries, if needed, from the Capital. And for Virtus Pro, it's just about, I think, trying to get the game back on their terms a little bit now. I think Virtus Pro are scared man. of Ace's Rats. They refuse to start on the top floor, whereas W7M, they haven't got the memo yet. Three times, as we said, and three losses defending on it back in that first half. Everything changed when they started moving over to different sites. I don't imagine we'll see too much aggression out of Passion this round, at least. Most certainly not jump outs, given one, they're playing on the downstairs, and two, he's sat playing the mute. That C4 is incredibly powerful. He'll be looking skyward, given there's the Bok on side. That's the main thing to keep your eye out for. Can they connect those C4s or the C4 onto the ideal target? Outside of that, a lot of this will come down to Shepard, I think, with those Yokai's. Can he keep them alive with the IQ hunting them down? I also want to say, who's going to stand up for the W7M in terms of the individual? Because right now as a team, they've actually all been at a very similar level, especially Herds and Nade. They've got four. Everyone else mm. around two to three anyway. But who's going to be maybe that Pasha, for example, that we saw in Skyscraper? Who's going to be able to take that step for W7M, find those critical entry kills, open things up for them? Right now, 90 seconds in. Great information here from Shepard on that Yokai outside of Bakery, they barricade that back oh. up. Herds is in some trouble here. And that goo mine, one more tick. He will go down and pulls it out just in time, but quite literally on one HP. It's funny because I was going to turn around and be like, Herds is that guy. He's the one to drag them through. And the first encounter he gets into in the round is away on two HP. I can't remember if it was him back on Skyscraper had the same thing coming into uh, top black on 2 HP, but there's a couple of times in this series if it was him who's now in a spot to get very lucky and walk away with a fraction of HP to still play out the round. 60 seconds remaining. W7M looking to make it three rounds in a row. Virtus Pro just allowing their opponents back into this one. Certainly would be quite devastating if they can't capitalize on a 4 nothing attacking start of Cafe. They certainly don't want to allow W7M to get a oh, here. And it's Dan, not Pasha, Dan who the gets man. two big kills. KZ swings VIP, gets Dan as well. Shuts him down, 3v3. Thunderous on his swing round there as well. I love the sound of the Mark 14. It's one of my favorite guns to hear ripping across the map. Steps around, but Joystick just a little too quick for KZ there. Two left for W7M. For Leapbox is in sight. I don't think they know about this, but obviously he's in the spot to get a bit of work done. Completely unsupported, as between him and JV is always on a fraction of HP, about eight to his name if he wins this one versus one. In fact, he's pushed out of sight. How has Philippe Bot's got away with this? Didn't want to plant because they didn't have JV. He actually then goes and help him. There's that BBC, gets rid of it with a gone six. Now plant goes down. JV now in a good position. Yokai. Play. Cover, Yokai gets shot out. That's why Philippe Bot's didn't want to go too early. He allows it to get through. He bumps up, but no, too late. Doesn't matter. Joystick gets the kill anyway. Puck stays alive, just barely needs to defend this plan for the next 40 seconds in a one versus two. How on earth have they nearly got away with this? The fact that Philippe Pox was here in the first place was criminal, and the fact they might still win is unbelievable. Hanging inside a freezer. He knows one's to his left, and the shot comes on through. Down he goes, he hits the deck. Shepard 
picking up on that one. Two still left alive. Virtus Pro are going to move up to five and two. I thought they played that really well. JV and Philippox didn't have the numbers. You obviously saw that Philippox got into a good position on the bomb chassis, stepped onto that goo mine, probably anticipated that someone would come into his direction. No one came. No one was in a position to play off at that goo mine. But what ended up happening is JV got Stark player inside of Whiskey. He was able to then help him out by pushing out rather than just going for the quick plant. Then they make it a 2v2. In the end, though, credit to VP, just able to keep the pressure on. Yokai's weren't too effective. Plant goes down, but they won some big trades. Five to two now for Virtus Pro. Ooh. Well, this is getting a little bit saucy, isn't it? Up to five and two. One more round, and they guarantee overtime at the minimum. It was actually around this point before we were saying, ah, oh, it's a real tall hill for VP to climb in that first half. Woo! Bit of a doozy. But W7M should be marching the rest of this map, and always just hesitant of saying that now, given what we saw on the previous map. And this wasn't strictly a bad attack. Admittedly, Philippe Ox, I don't know how on earth he managed to slip the net, but it was more of a JV was like, okay, I'm stuck on Brown. I can't push forward. He's like, don't come to me. Yeah. I'll come to you. He did a lot of work. You could see in that highlight there, it might seem like, oh, JV's not watching. He had no choice. He was trying to destroy those yokais. But what's interesting, he's the second one, because he got the first one really quick, really clean, but the second one then came through, and he missed a couple of shots. Had he hit that straight away, first time, he can then turn his attention around to the hallway and actually make it a little bit more winnable. Instead, he misses. Yokai goes up. He's looking at the ceiling. Shot in the back of the head. Scary, isn't it? Reading with Fireplace then for round eight. Again, reminder, Virtus Pro win this one. They go up to map point, a great spot to be in. And we do then get that border map that I'm not normally excited about border games, but I love to see border between these two because they've been on it with the fragging today. Pasha, KZ and Herds especially have all shone at different times and now it's Dan's time to shine. Mm, I'm going early here, but there is a bingo for Des and Ace, third map OT. D does it count if it's menu? If I call you Ace as a nickname, surely that counts. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't see any TNCs anywhere that the person had to actually have a formal name of Ace. <laughs> right. Let's see if we get there a long way until that could be a potential reality as we head into this eighth round. Now, do you like flashes? No. Well, they hurt my eyes. Too bad. There's a lot of them right now for <laughs> W7M. I'm more concerned about the number of C4s coming into Virtus Pro and the Valkyrie's there to feed the information across. I'll give it to W7M on their attack so far. They have brought the IQ every single round, showing respect to the Yokai's, the Black Eyes. They're just very aware that that can really cause a headache. And in case you do see things like the Solus being brought along, also IQ helps towards that. Whenever it's active, we'll be able to see the Solus and it becomes a game of chasing cat and mouse in a way, the same way you used to see IQ and Pulse play the same dance before. Oh, good shot from Herds. A little nice. slip in towards Bard. Gets the kill onto Joystick. I think he was a little bit caught off guard by Herds' position at mm. Bard. I don't think he was expecting him to be that close. Nice entry kill, though, for W7M. And a big kill as well into a player who's been playing well in Joystick. No response here from Pasha. Jesse thought he was going to be the man for VP. So far, though, it does kind of feel like it's been others, especially Dan in that last round. Joystick at other points as well, but still a chance here from Pasha over towards reading. It was the right idea, I think, trying to stick with the C4, though. Maybe... <sighs> Painful. I say right idea. Maybe it would have been to put it on the dead to KB's body, knowing that they'd be going for the phone for the hack and well, not dead to KB on the dead body. Sorry for the to KB to go and hack the phone afterwards. Blowing that up may have been the play. But one thing I'll come back to again: lack of drones for W7M. Only two in the round. The mute doing a lot of work here, and they picked up a lot of the intel game. Shepard might sting them with this one as well. Narrowly misses. Misses twice. Oh misses a third. The back and forth dance by KZ with the fancy feet. Oh, it's the Windy City that is calling in that moment. Difficult shots, difficult in terms of the pressure at the stakes as well over towards oh, White Stairs, but the shots needed to land, and they certainly did not, Des. And guess what? The punishment comes through from W7M with the round win. Reading mm -hmm. it by a place unlocked and won, and so far again for what's turned into a bit of a, a bizarre affair in a tacker-sided cafe is what we're kind of getting here. Much to probably the chagrin of everyone, because I'm not seeing a lot of love for this ultra-defensive-sided scene meta right now. It's great to see some real hard for attacking round wins. It is. Between two real titans of teams as well, right? Like W7M, World Global Seed number one, great success last year. The last dance for this roster as well. Let's not forget they said this was their last time under W7M. No doubt they'll go somewhere else afterwards, but it is a real big mo uh, mo moment for them on home soil to go on and win this when Brazilian teams in Sao Paulo and Rio all those years ago fell to European teams in the Grand Final. They can really change it. But for Virtus Pro, I think even some had a few doubts about coming into the competition so far have impressed and they are keeping arguably the best team in the right now to account. They're really challenging them every step of the way. 
thing is, round nine for me is the pivotal round. Me and Tim talk about this a lot. If you see Virtus Pro win here, they've got a three round advantage. They're on map point. That is very hard to come back across three separate sites for W7M. If W7M win it, suddenly they're one round within striking distance. And it's like, well, can we keep up at that point? Absolutely, you can. You're in striking distance. You spoke about flashes before. I just saw when the UI came up in the top right corner. How many flashes we now have in this round is well, ludicrous. It's exactly how many we had in the last round it's as well. It's bonkers, isn't it? Yeah, back to back 12 flashes available for W7M. I really wonder the utility. if that's trying to bully the fact that we haven't seen much Warden out of Virtus Pro. Yeah, potentially. I think it's also good because it helps out clear out these kind of positions, gets good angles. And I think right now for W7M, really just playing into sort of double down into the attack is just very sort of aggressive against the defense. Having so many flashes makes it even more annoying for VP. We go to mining again, by the way. We mm. saw it in that earlier half by W7M, and they were very successful with that kind of multi-layered vert approach where they had the Oryx down below, they had the Vigil up above. Not quite the same setup for VP, but playing into that kind of Solus and, and Mozzie combo. We saw in the last round, the Mute was actually very effective. There was only like one drone left for W7M. Didn't matter though. And right now, they've only already mm. lost four with two minutes to go. But again, will it really matter? Right now, W7M just kind of look like they're, they're hitting their shots again. This is that most heavily defender-sided uh, site on this map at 60%, but while at facts getting way of a good story, hey, the momentum it feels is starting to build back in W7M's favor. Taking it slowly here as well for the start of the round. We are halfway in, no early engagements coming out, still sweeping their way across the top floor. You can see Virtus Pro all scurrying around on that second floor like a rat's nest, really, waiting to see when the heavens open up, when W7M start thinking about that execute. And with Philippe Ox, I imagine joining them up on this third floor soon, that should mean a lot of them floorboards getting ripped open. Minute and 18 seconds here remaining, five to three, as you said, very pivotal round. VP win it out, they get those three match points, something that mentally W7M will have to deal with in terms of the comeback and trying to send this one to overtime. W7M though, it's that kind of slow paced start as well for a team that's the fourth fastest when it comes to entries and entry kills. They have certainly been slowed down like the map probably suggests would do. Philippox getting some information here from this new belt position. 50 seconds left, using that skeleton key to his advantage to open up some sight lines super far down, looking into ward mining. 40 seconds though, and again, still no real contact between either of these teams. Not yet, which means a very explosive end. <laughs> which we love to see. I love the chaos. Keep bringing it to oh, me. The timing oh, the timing. That is a classic oh. hashtag siege timing moment. Looks away for a fraction of a second. And that's when Dan chooses to swing. Holding, holding, holding. Oh, look away and dead. It, it happens it's, to it's so many. It's infuriating, isn't it, at the best of times? 20 seconds remaining now. Nay just wants to step inside of mine and go for a plant. Where's the cover? JV made his way over towards red. Now over towards pillar. No, Nade is going to get that plant down. Surely will be contested. Yes, he's shot out. Joystick in a good position. They knew they'd go for that little window. And, he can't. and there's no time remaining. BP have found their way to three match points. Looking to send us to a third match. Up. Oh boy. I love how as we start shouting, I hear the next stream over start shouting as well. Like, we're Rounds ending at the same time, shout. it's great. <laughs> Can't <laughs> complain. But you are right, we said this earlier on as well. Now they've won that quite you know, big pivotal round for them. A three round advantage that at map point, Virtus Pro can take a leisurely stroll here. They've got three sites they can rotate through, all the sites we've just seen played out. Mm. They can afford to even mess it up at a couple of times. They can afford to try something crazy like jump outs. We only really saw early round aggression in round one. VP very quickly shut that, shut that conversation down as they got rid of two W7M players inside 30 seconds. I just feel for W7M, unless we see some real magic come through in these next three rounds, we are destined for map three. You know, it's interesting. I, I look at the bands for W7M so far at SI, and Solus is one that banned out quite a lot. It's been prevalent, not just the Solus, but also a lot of this kind of drone denial. So clearly it's something they don't like to deal with, and mm. it's clearly something over the last couple of rounds, you pointed it out, where a lot of their drones are just being flushed out super early in these rounds, denies them that kind of information. Yeah, they're bringing a lot of these flashes to kind of help them get back remaining. certain positions. But clearly right now, I think VP has really played a good job in denying info. Five I think when you've got a team like W7M, who if you cast your mind back to Skyscraper, we praise them for how good they were at finding an isolated member of Virtus Pro and having three or four players just crush them right. They were really good at that. That is still something you can do even without drones, but it is exponentially more risky. You don't know what angles are being held. 
And so it might be causing a little bit of hesitance on the side of W7M. They're second guessing themselves. They're thinking, is this the right play or is there a better one we can make here? And that indecisiveness can just open enough windows for Virtus Pro to capitalize. And I think for that reason, that seeing things like Solus, the Mute, the Mozzie is a really valuable tactic against a team like W7M that relies so heavily on kind of stacked odds with the information they collect. At the halftime show, it was kind of about who's going to be the one to lead the way for VP. Jesse said Pasha, but right now it's been Dan. 11 and 4, he certainly had some critical kills. And he's been the one that's just kind of stepped up in terms of the individualism for VP, but really it's been a team effort, especially mm. on the defense, looking to close this out, send us to border, which I'm going to be honest, I can't wait to get to border oh, yeah. if we do. I think that's going to be so much fun between these two teams. So excited. And the fact that it would also be going into that third map where both teams took each other's map picks really speaks volumes here. And again, we go back to the very much pre kind of match discussion around this. You win this game, your likelihood of topping this group increases exponentially. Not a guarantee, but you said it before, Des, there's only one more game for both of these two teams after this one. And games that realistically is the top two teams in the group right now and the level of performance we're seeing here, you'd expect them to go on and win. Crazy things happen. It is SI. We've seen some bonkers results so far. Crazier things have happened across Reloading. many a tournament in Siege. Halfway through the round, no one has gone down. The last few rounds have had that little bit kind of nervous energy to them where both teams are kind of scared of making a misstep, but it has been a little bit slower. It has been more about the initial setup, but it all counts when it comes down to the execute. W7M still getting themselves set up, but I think in the next 20 to 30, you'll see this hit come through. Yeah, I agree. And I think that for W7M, it's about just how much info can they get, deny some of this utility. Three drones remaining walled in. We've been speaking about that information that they've had available. Jump outside, looking to reposition here for W7M. Virtus Pro, very much maybe moments away from sending us to border. Down white stairs comes KZ. He knows there's one inside of VIP. It's going to be a strong power play, looking to deny the hatch drop. Trades come through again. It's Dan, but Basha too in the clutch. Outside gets that kill from Felipe though to get the trade three versus two so right down to the wire 30 seconds left to philippe Ox and jv we go one more time can they do it inside 30 seconds stacked up together at least it's a small thing they've got going for them and last time round philippe Ox managed to snake his way in but these evil eyes are not going to make it easy diffuser recovered stepping their way through they found a little bit of a gap here to get in but these evil eyes are going to be so infuriating to deal with and he's like no not looking it's when you look at a cat and it turns its head away from you jv's trying to get the delivery gun but this one is infuriating one goes down we're going to map three Frustration boiling over there inside of Kitchen. The temperature rises and, and speaking about rising, PP rides to the very top with a 7-3 win. I'm almost speechless, Des. I cannot believe the turnaround after a bit of a heartbreak over on Skyscraper. What a reversal here on Cafe, taking the map pick away from W7M. It's a statement. We spoke about this last night, about how this felt like a real Titanic matchup. And I was worried in the first half of Skyscraper, one team hadn't turned up on the day. All we have seen since Skyscraper is both teams step it up in different ways. They have, they have. W7 and back on map one. Overall started strong, ended strong. Here, I feel VP have had the run of this map from start to finish. They certainly really convinced him. Well, they had four attacking rounds to begin with. We were sitting here thinking, what is going on? Is this yeah. going to be attacker sided in some ways? A little bit, but I think when we saw the conclusion to this game, we saw enough to suggest it maybe wasn't all about the attacker sided. It was mainly about VP. It's just tantalizing prospects on border. I can't wait. I'm honestly like, just get me into map three now. I'd love to. When, absolutely love to. When I saw this matchup, and when I saw that we were going to be covering this, I was like, I really want this to be a banging game. And that's why at the beginning of Skyscraper, 5 nothing W7M, I was like, oh no. It's super one-sided. It's going to be just all about W7M stomping. But what a turnaround from VP, even on that map, then also on to Cafe. It's been a huge performance from them to send us to border. I can't wait to see the conclusion of this series. Because honestly, right now, if you ask me who's going to win it, i got no idea. It's, it's anyone's guess. Honestly, I need to go and cool down. We'll go to a break when we come back. The desk have got you. See you from up three soon. Heath at the minute inside of storage. I think just, um, you know, again, looking for anybody getting in underneath, playing the book, anything like that, trying to open up. Uh, you know, there isn't a book on side. He won't know that. Um, but we're sure he does have the ash, so could do a little bit of vertical destruction um, and work from underneath. So Crypto is just going to try and prevent that.
Well, we had one pretty serious question going into this, and that is what do VP have on Cafe? W7M roam and own Cafe, or at least have done up until now, Jesse. Yeah, they're supposed to be, right? They're supposed to be the kings of this map, their best map statistically. Uh, and yet it crumbles, it falls apart. Seven and one record shattered to a seven and two. Uh, really felt like W7M couldn't get going on that defense. Those first four rounds in a row, obviously massive for the uh, for the scoreline of Virtus Pro, getting all of those right off the bat. Really felt to me like we didn't see W7M have anywhere near as much success on the Rome game, right? On Skyscraper, what were they able to do? They were slippery, they were moving around, they were able to dodge the drones and find those picks. At this point though, on this map, Virtus Pro had all the intel and they found all the frags. And I think that's due to specifically how this map is played out. It's usually top down, you clear from the third floor, get all the way down to the basement, or it's sometimes vice versa, you're coming up, getting all that down. So yeah, there really isn't a lot of room to be moving around like you were saying for W7M to make those lurk slippery plays. Because if you aren't on one side of the map on that level, you're clearly only can be in one other place or on the next floor. So yeah, it definitely gonna be harder for W7M to get that down. But I said it last game, this was going to come down to who was going to find their attack half best. And clearly, we saw VP put out a dominant performance, way better attacks in terms of just communication, droning, being in sync with each other, just having an overall general consensus of how they wanted to approach that site. And they looked far more comfortable going into this map. And something we touched on in the first map, which I think has completely changed here, but but just the start of the rounds for W7M, especially on their defense, they just looked so indomitable uh, on Skyscraper. But here on Cafe, it, it really was just slipping away each and every time. In the pregame of map one, I said that, you know what, I think VP have that play style that can kind of stop the hyper aggression that we see from W7M. And I was looking, I had some egg on my face after map one when that completely didn't happen. But this is where we saw that. And I think Gabe hit the nail on the head. When we got to a map where uh, Virtus Pro were just more comfortable, they knew the map, they knew the angles, and the angles were maybe a little bit more static, less fluid. They were able to do that perfectly, and that's going to be a real challenge for W7M when they make it to that third map. I mean, and that third map, that's going to be, I mean, that's the decider of that. And going into that third map too, I mean, VP looks extremely strong yesterday, having that 7-0 over M80. I mean, that's what, I mean, what do you do, like, if you're W7M? <laughs> we'll wait and see, won't we? That's the, that's the big thing. We're going to have to wait and see on that one. It's actually something I want to talk about very quickly before we move into the conversation of Border is, you know, whether defense is sound enough uh, from VP. Obviously, I think I think he mentioned, you know, like it, it wasn't just one, one type of defense. They were chopping and changing. They were cutting between the two. Yeah, and I think that's important, especially in this meta. You need to be able to adapt on that. You need to know when to be a little more passive and you also know when to be and get aggressive, just like we saw Pasha doing for them in the last game. He was doing that aggressive roaming, going in on those flanks. And then even here, they were just, they were playing a little stagnant, but then in some areas, they would get aggressive and then immediately fall back and then play a very passive game and let W7M fall into their grasp. Yeah, I mean, going over to Border, we've seen Verse Pro play it two days in a row. This will be their third. And it's a map that has had two very different faces. Day one, 7-2 loss, rocked by Liquid, just couldn't get their feet underneath them. And then yesterday, the exact same scoreline, the other direction, a 7-2 victory coming through from Virtus Pro. And so I really think you look at that game, the two players that stood out to me as having the biggest change in impact were Joystick and Shepard. Both of those players really found their footing the second time around, felt like they were much better able to survive through the early round in, say, in the terms of joystick and have that impact throughout the late round as well. So I'm looking at those two guys. I'm hoping we see that continuation from the second time they played this map. Because again, I mean, it's a map that we didn't expect VP to ever pick up. Now they've picked it up and we'll see uh, how their story continues on it. Let me make a correction. I said 7-0 on border. I was looking at 2-0 when I was saying 7-2. Nah, That's what I meant to say. But no, going into border specifically, watching that M80 game, they were doing exactly what I was seeing here or even during the skyscraper defensive house, they were letting essentially M80 push in and just play those crossfires that were heavily favored into VP. And that's exactly how I think VP is going to try to play this. I don't think they're going to switch up anything they did from M80. I think they're going to play their game. They're going to force W7M into uncomfortable gunfights, uncomfortable positioning, and try to run away with it from there. But again, a lot of these, a lot of what it comes down to border is power positions. Yeah, power positions in dome, power positions in E-Box. Getting those points are going to be hard contesting. And if you can't get in that, you're going to struggle. Look, we saw it on Skyscraper a little bit, right? Teams struggling to get inside the map, struggling to clear out power positions. Is this something that might follow through to Border? Yeah, I mean, this map is like a polar opposite from Cafe, right? The way that we saw Cafe go down, the way the Cafe runs as a map, is that there is simply... Uh, 
going to be ages before you get into the building before those opening picks. Border, it's going to be right off yeah. the bat. You're fighting people as soon as you spawn into the building. So I really do think that this is going to be one where we can see a little bit more slipperiness coming through from W7M like we saw on Skyscraper. I also think they struggled to get those trades when they lost the opening pick on Cafe because yeah. it's such a big map. There's only so many people on whatever floor you're trying to roam clear. Now that we're on Border, everybody's like right there. Yeah. Trades are going to be a lot easier to come by for the defense. So I think this is going to be more of a challenge coming through from Virtus Pro. Mm. Again, this is a map they've been working on. We know they've been putting in the time. So I hope they've got what it takes. Well, an interesting stat going back from the first map to Skyscraper when we are talking about that aggressive play style from W7M and meeting them on that defensive side and playing that aggressive style. So in that game, there were 14 opening kills. And out of those 14 opening kills, three of those were traded. <laughs> And a lot of those obviously were heavily went into W7M's favor, getting in malting and netting, malting in net. Oh my God, <laughs> <laughs> I can't talk. They were netting into multi kills. Bang, there so we go. We got there in the end. So W7M, I mean, you learned this from VP that they're going to play a little slower. So yeah. are you going to get aggressive now, like you were in Skyscraper, or are you going to fall back a little bit and kind of play the game that W, I mean, that VP is now playing? Well, that's actually leading into probably the, the final question that I have for Border is, you know, we saw quite a few times VP struggling to enter the building uh, with the aggression yeah. that we were seeing. How do they go about mitigating this? How do they go about diminishing that risk? If I'm in that situation, you make W7M make the wrong play because if they're already meeting you with an aggressive play style, let them peek you. You get that kill. You go up man advantage and keep playing man advantage at that point. 100%. Hold your angles. Make sure that you're ready for the swings because they are going to come. It's W7M. They are very, very good at getting aggressive, so you've got to shut that down. Certainly do. And it's time for us to shut up shop here on the desk. We're going to go across to Xenox and Dez to run you through the final map of Border. Yeah, I'm so glad that we've been able to get here as well. What a pleasure. It's been so much fun working with, with you been. as well. Des and with Ace as well. We've done a little switch of Runic, of course, Guz and, uh, and Ace are over on that beast at the moment. We've got the best game. Let's be honest. We go to Border. It's the third map. It's VE along with W7M, the champions, if you will. And it's a 50% prediction split right down the middle. It is hard to call. We've seen strong maps from both teams. Uh, Skyscraper definitely a little bit more 50-50. I'll wager Virtus Pro quite convincingly taking Cafe overall. When it comes into this map, there's still so much to sort of learn and figure out. Virtus Pro did not play this map in 2023 at all. It was a perma ban. It was away from their map pool. They didn't even take a sniff at it. Whereas at this major so far, twice they've played it. This will be the third time. So clearly something they brought into their map pool recently. Whereas on W7M side, a 50% win rate on this map back in 2023. So not the hottest map. Not terrible for them, but for a team in their form, maybe you'd expect a bit of a stronger showing here. For the third time, W7M start defense. For the third time, W7M ban Grim. And for the third time, VP ban Ying. I like to think there's a gentleman's agreement here. They're shaking hands before the game and said, right, you'll ban that, we ban this. Yeah, cool, nice. And then it gets all chaotic on the defensive side of bans because Virtus Pro keep on banning that as army away and JV92 isn't very happy about it. We are one ban away from having basically the same four bands across all of the maps. It's the Valkyrie this time around, though, from Hi, WSN. They're, one, right? they're a little bit more flexible with that final defensive yeah. ban. Yeah, they are. So nothing too unexpected there. It's going to play out similar to the rest of the series with those operators being absent on Cafe. We did see the Valk available and it was played. An absolute metric ton is the only way I can describe it. The respect being shown through things like the IQ, at least from W7M, to make sure the Yokai's the Valk wasn't able to be too effective. The Soul is being picked up here by Herd straight away, though, as we launch into, you guessed it, Armory Archives for our Rock first up. sight. I do wonder if uh, we might have only just had a, a bit of a one-off when it comes to attacking side at Siege. In saying that, I think Border statistically is one of the best, if not maybe the best, when it does come to attacking at this tournament thus far. I haven't got the numbers directly in front of me, but I do. that's the, the general feel when it comes to the maps. For me, I think it's Border. Consulate is a little bit better by two. How many maps have we seen a Consulate, though, in terms of this, uh, the sub-sample? Uh, we've seen a few, I'm pretty sure. Um, it's been played across 19 rounds, so yeah, a few times. That's not a lot, actually. Mm, I know, I haven't cast it yet. Yeah, neither have I. <laughs> I mean, well, you can screw down the consulate, maps, apparently. Like 90 yeah. rounds played plus. It's, yeah. yeah, others have been seen a lot more, but it yeah. has still been played, yes. Yeah, like 97 Five. rounds of, uh, of Border, in fact. Maybe that stat's going back to the fourth yeah. tournament, I don't know. We have seen a lot of maps, to be fair. It's, you know, we're on day three, and we've gone through... Uh, how many best, three? Eight best of threes every day? You know, it does fly, and you do yeah. get a lot of playtime in. 
Oh, 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 I mean, Herds is starting this map out the way that he started out Skyscraper, absolutely deleting Virtus Pro at the start. Yeah, and probably need as well to do just that for W7M on the defense, because they were quite lackluster on Cafe to begin. Remember, VP winning the first four rounds. So obviously for W7M, needing to feel on border, that they've got to get aggressive, try and deny these entry points, somewhat similar to what we saw maybe back on Skyscraper, defensively for W7M. A couple of words coming out in chat as well between the two teams off the back of that initial opening kill from Herds on to Always. Gets rid of the Docker B2, so no logic bombs for the entry for VP trying to play off of the Monte. Although it's obviously a very different map, I think that's the shape where we had very aggressive holds coming onto this side of the map back on Skyscraper. Exhibition, for example, was really hard for VP to get any kind of control of, and it's looking to be a somewhat similar story. With KZ in and around waiting area, we've got Nay inside of office for Leapox on these stairs, just keeping Shepard outside of the map. It's a little slowdown momentarily. Hurts, of course, eventually losing his life in response to getting the opening kill. So one for one. Exit of four versus four. We see the Blackbeard as well from Dan. Mm, he brings out the, uh, they know shield. upstairs. Surely they know that it's yeah, there. They do. But, There's yeah. the pink. The thing is, they could pinch you from below, but you've got that support from KZ above waiting area as well. So it's not as simple as just, just pushing from below. Lol, it needs a little bit more to it than that and just feel like they're not really being given the opportunity they need to get this round moving. Final gas bag utilized there by Philippe Oxford yeah. with over 60 oh. seconds remaining. No <laughs> kill coming through there from Shepard. Uh, sorry, from Dan. Dan Little unable to find that kill. A little bit chip, but not enough to see him completely finished off. And that wall reinforced off. That's a really good hold coming out from W7M. And again, I likened it back to Skyscraper. It does feel the same, although there's not been a massive swing of kills. They've wasted two minutes, gone one for one. That was exactly what Herds achieved back yep. at the start of Skyscraper. I will say, though, it's still a four versus four here for VP. These are kind of the similarities to, say, a cafe as well. So you can mm. kind of look to the two maps that we played thus far and maybe take elements of both of it here for both teams. Blending it all together. Now, should be able to at least start trying to get something open here. As you hear the Oscaras going through from Pasha. Last 30 seconds, though. Confirm the vert below. Start happening. Yeah, confirm that vert below. Then Shepard can maybe go for the backwards plant here on the Montang. That's clearly their win condition. He's That's so what they low, want though. to achieve. Holding the angle now is going to be Pasha on Pasha the Havana. 20 seconds remaining. Shepard will eventually look to try and turn around. Pasha's going to be the one that Hello. will play behind him. And Shepard is not being yeah, contested nays. here. Surely they're going to try and deny this. Nay from below, though. He's underneath with the shotgun. He can blast out the floor. He Where's the vert going below? Through. They've got to move and do something. Then they've gone for the back corner instead, actually. Five and Nay's not in a spot to be able to deal with this right now. They're letting them get away with it. And they found the back note. They have a Pasha just managed to stick it. For Leapox falls and it feels really like they've gone away with a bit of murder there. A C4 comes on through. It should be enough. Joystick's got around in here and do something. They're getting the disable going on through. He's found one for himself. He's got to go fast, but it's not going to be fast enough. A crucial shot coming in from KZ and W7M. Claw back round one. There's so much to probably go over in terms of that round. <laughs> Crazy. One of the, balls, the fact that there was no contest down below from VP, that was the biggest issue. That's why they couldn't go for the plant in the doorway behind the Montang. They did a nice job of pivoting to the corner. I thought that was really smart. Really you know smart. what the issue with that, though, is it's a, a lot more difficult to then rub back out. And you also then can't play the doorway and play the balcony. So clearly, yes, nice pivot, but it really wasn't what they wanted. So they needed to try and get someone down below clear out the vert, mm. get control. I thought they were going to necessarily do that. They didn't. They get punished for it. Even despite that, still got the plant down. Still a very fun, lively round, but it is W7M on the board to begin. They really struggled to get that downstairs control of things because obviously they never really had control of office. There was this like two minute battle around East stairs that just kept on working against them. Really smart for W7M, I'll hand it to them, really. They were the ones that wasted all that time at the start at the cost of Herds' life. They got the one for one. Certainly no complaints and the Virtus Pro, maybe there has to be that willingness to pivot away that little bit quicker or accept that you are playing a very high risk, high reward game. After dropping another map, of course, they dropped a map yesterday to bleed. These guys are champions. Out. They are amazing, but clearly they're not infallible. No, no. And that's the thing I think at this competition, with very few exceptions, no one is infallible. Obviously, some have struggled more than most, looking mainly at the Korean teams when I say that. <laughs> but even Bliss, who I know you're absolutely torn up by, have put on really good performances time and time again. But just can't quite get over the finish line. Mm. But if nothing else, it shows there are very, very few freebies in this competition. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. No freebie in this series either. Both teams trying to fight for top spot in this group for Group C, a group that many looked at initially as the group of death when it looked at that stacked names of rosters of teams 
Joystick trying to get a bit of top east stairs control here for Virtus Pro. Getting inside of buildings has probably been one of their weaknesses a little bit so far in this series. Once they do get in and get into good positions, mm. though, they've been very strong. They look a little bit hesitant at points, I think, as well. And I don't blame them, really. You can't always get enough information on W7M. They punish you when you do try and step in. They got, you know, gunned down so many times back on Sky, just trying to step in through a window, for example. Some great double kills coming out of hers, multi kills from KZ time and time again. So it feels like that is going to cause some hesitancy. Completely understandably so. Under a minute and a half remaining. Still five versus five. No contact made between either of the teams. W7M have shown aggressiveness though on the defensive border to begin, although only into the second round. And Joystick, uh, Joystick's through break now. And gets uh, an air jab over towards top metal. Always does maybe get into a bit of a frack up, but no, no, nothing to really come from it once again. Getting to that 60 second mark now still. And I think the longer this goes on, W7M will be happy. Just looking at the, the spread of players from W7M, they're all very like, tightly grouped together with the exception of one player on the downstairs. There's nice C4 attempt coming out of Nate. Not going to find anyone, but they are quite tightly grouped all around Fountain, all around site. No one's really playing off it anymore. No one's getting caught out by Virtus Pro. Instead, you're letting them run the clock down. And here, Pasha needs to get this kill. A good flash coming on through, but shoots him in the side of the head before he can even start a march on forward. Not so ideal. And Pasha's going to got to do, deal with two angles here. They do find one. The Leapots gets rid of Pasha, though, straight into a four versus three. And it looks like it might be enough to hold on. However, a three v three with 25 to go. Ooh, good it's shot. Saveable. Always and Dan at the same time. What a flip from 4-3 to 3-2, just like that. 15 seconds remaining. Time's still a big factor here. Shepard with the diffuser. Someone to keep an eye on, though, but they get another kill to JV. Through the wall, through the heart, and VP get a round as we go one round at a time. It's now 1-1. One, one. I was a bit nervous coming to that point when it was, you know, 25 seconds left on the clock, still massive numbers advantage. W7M are dug in around sight. They've got the ability to play these trades off each other. But Virtus Pro just brute force it through. And that's why this has become yeah. such an unpredictable game now. Every single map has had its different kind of unique parts about it. The play styles, the way the teams have taken rounds out from each other. So hard to predict. It's beautiful stuff to watch again. Yeah, as I said, to kind of kickstart that round, take this one round at a time. Let's not look too far to the future. And just like that, with one round in to go, since saying that, VP bounced back. And it's a sort of little 50 50 kind of moment there, middle portion of that round. Because at one point, W7M maybe started to look like they were going to ward off the attack. 30 seconds there. After that kill, it's a four on three. And but then, bang, straight away, always Dan line up. They get two in quick succession. That then means they can overload site, get the plant down. They didn't even really need it in the end. Got the kills. Really nicely done from Virtus Pro. And it continues with this storyline that, sure, slow to begin, slow to get into the building. Once they do, they're very deadly. It's almost like the insurance policy of what I've always dropping down to take the player that was below. Because we caught him. We said there's one player downstairs here. Everyone else is sat on site upstairs. Mm. And just in case there was potentially a C4 to come singing at them, a shotgun to blast the floor open as they were going in for a plant in case they couldn't get everyone on top floor. They've just made sure they've thought everything through and learned from the mistake in round one where they had no pressure downstairs. So really good adaptation between round one and round two from Virtus Pro. I also feel like, and say no pressure, I'm going to say this might be strange to hear. I don't feel like there's much pressure inside of the server right now either. I mean, because you could, I mean, argue that there's a lot of pressure, but right now both teams, I think, have shown enough and you go back to the predictions of 50% each. It's not like either team is like super expected to be the team to probably get over the top. It really does feel like a genuine 50-50 and you just gotta win every little battle, every little moment. JV gets an early kill for W7M, and that gives them the advantage. And for Pasha, who's been a name we've kind of thrown around, he keeps slamming that desk while he's 0-3. That poor desk. Or that poor hand. <laughs> it's not gonna be having a good time. Either way, you know, his team, again, this is where it comes down to that team element. Not every single player is gonna be firing on all cylinders in every single game, and there are some maps that just won't fly on the way they do on others. Was, yes, he had a brilliant map back on Sky. Last map, it was the Dan Show. Someone else might be the hero stepping into this one for Pro, but equally, the same thing can be said about W7M. Can they get inside of the building, though? Shepard droning through break. Okay, they can get in towards security, make their way, sweep across, clear that vert. Herds, though, on the solar. Someone that needs to be, of course, taken down over towards Armory. Finally, now in towards security, off that live drone, getting into the building. But it is indeed said solace of Herds does eventually get that kill on to always. So, yes, they got in towards security, live drone that, but they had no intel in terms of Armory. And that's their downfall when they finally did enter the map. KZ loses his life elsewhere. Again, similar to the last round of the forum. On three. Anything can happen from here in this series. Nothing would surprise me anymore.
Well, Epox was hanging around on these stairs for the longest time, almost ready to poke his head above the parapet and see what was going on upstairs. I think it's now dropped away as they're aware that this top floor has largely been taken over by Virtus Pro. Herds really, for me, could be that X Factor. He's upstairs, inside of Armory Archives. If he moves across that top floor smartly enough, a lot of damage could be done to Virtus Pro. They've got no drones really to track him either, but the air jabs are down. Being killed from dead. Speaking of dead, so never mind. Three versus three, 45 <laughs> seconds. Talk about another fanatical finish here between these two teams and yet another round where it's really difficult to supersede who's going to be able to get this one, who will take the advantage. I don't even know if this map's going to be attack or defense. If it's sighted, it's really hard to predict. 30 seconds left, three versus three. Who have you got, Des? Oh, man, this risky drop. I don't know. If they have the angle, if Nade's got this long shot straight through into battle, him, maybe, but Shepard's not been tagged oh, out yeah. there. He's got down safely. They've got the cover for him. They're stepping their way forward. Will they find the man? Can they get it in time as well? No, they cannot. Diffuser is down. A kill back. One for either side. 2v2. Yeah, plant down though. So retake scenario here for W7M. What have they got to be able to do it? No impacts available for Nate. Couple of good minds, but probably not going to do much. They do need to go for the retake up above in terms of the burst. Joystick half out. Oh, 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 oh. Headshot it's from Nate onto Joystick. It's a very low HP dead. He is susceptible here. Body shot will do the job. And indeed it will. Wow, W7M in the retake. Despite the plant going down successfully from Virtus Pro, W7M, they know that they have to go above, have to retake. They do so against two players that are very low on health. And again, it's another close round here on Border. Just being in that situation as Dan as well, when you're kind of exposed and the player you're trying to fight against is just dancing in and out, just jiggle peeking in and out of the doorway, and you're like, okay. Take your shot, mate. Come on, stop making me look a mug now. And eventually, Nate just steps out, takes it, gets the kill. Two, quill, um, two kills in quick succession. Really good post plant being played out by W7M. But key thing across this, the thing, some close rounds starting to form on border. It's not quite as dominant as we saw across the halves in the last two maps. Yeah, it's interesting you say that, and I agree wholeheartedly, because you look back to Skyscraper, and it was largely dominant from W7M. Cafe then the same, but for Virtus Pro. We go to border, and it's kind of like the combination of the first two maps that we had. And now we getting these kind of 50-50 rounds. It's scrappy. It's 3v3s and 2v2s and post-plant retakes. It's really what you want to see, though. And both teams so far are coming to the table very much evenly. 2-1 scoreline for W7M. But as we said, they do they look a little bit susceptible at times. And we head over to Armory and Archives here for the fourth round. Doing that, Femri coming back on side once again. Always see it as the sort of anti-rush operator. You charge forward, you get yourself blinded, and guess what? Pretty much guaranteed to be dead. Now, Blackbeard last time was employed in tandem with the Monty as well to take these stairs, and that was more so Dan wasn't going to get suddenly swung on a headshot while he was laid out at the top of the north stairs. The Monty pushed in through South Door, and they had that kind of crossfire set up, but the big problem was they had no way to unseat the smoke that was playing on actual East Stairs itself, and that was what wasted two minutes of time and ultimately led to Virtus Pro losing the round. Obviously, no Monty to play behind here, so a little bit of a different game plan coming out. But Dan, I'm sure, looking to have a big impact. He did well last map. He's doing well this map so far. Could be the X Factor that they need. And sure enough, almost finds hurts as he gets a little bit cheeky. Cracking the shield of the Ballistic Shield for Dead. And one thing that's also back here is the 12 flashes that are available. We saw that back on Cafe. So again, flashes galore for VP at hand. Hertz has been very aggressive. I think he continues to just about do so. Found the kill onto Joystick. Crack. There goes the ballistic kill. <laughs> He's had his chances. That's it. Got to be able to win these ones now. Pretty much straight up. Uh, W7M dug in, only 60 seconds in, let's not forget here as well, but they do look dug in, they look comfortable for now. Still got most of the players playing very tight around each other again, looking for those trades, able to respond to new information and new threats very quickly. In for Leapox has backed out to the rest of the team from East Stairs quite quickly here. So Virtus Pro have got the run of the map if they want it. Got to be mindful that you don't see Philippe Pox retake lost grounds. Yeah, Herd still inside of security. KC over towards that fountain area as well. Philippe Pox, no, Top East. They've got so much of this map control right now. W7M, considering the amount of time remaining. VP, though, have rotated over towards the north side, trying to get themselves inside of the map. Still on that balcony, though. A lot of them. <gasps> All four stacked oh, together. Herd's making the run across now inside of security, starting to send a bit of pressure here on that side. Big stack from VP. Another gas bait from Philippe Pox. Defending this top East Stairs position, doing so successfully. He keeps looking down towards Passport, but everyone's coming from the same direction of VP. It's exactly that. You know, so many times he's played in this spot throughout the first three rounds, now doing it in the fourth, and they've not really had anyone come up threatening him from below. Felipox also getting always. This is proving to be a real nightmare for Virtus Pro. East Stairs looking like a massive fortress for W7M so far. And there he goes again. 
Two versus three. Pasha at least with a bit of this East Stairs control. Still some time. So that, once again, W7M, they've got the numbers. This is probably one thing that started to become a little bit of a trend here. I think so far on board at W7M, and just constantly that one extra player up. That's the problem. They just keep on happily whittling down these trades. This one for one. Great shot coming out of Pasha. His first two kills of the map, both coming in this round. Very quiet for our first three. Reloading. But we'll forgive him as long as he continues to shine into this round and beyond. Bit of a drone. Running into office as well. We got a little bit stuck up here last time around. It's where W7 managed to clean things up. But the push comes on through. Looking in towards Archives. Right place, right sort of time. There's one tucked in around the corner, but they're waiting for the peak to come on through, and no one's daring to swing. Pasha, go. you've got to make a move. Plank going down. We'll be able to find oh, one. Nick Bosa comes in. The C4 over the top. And JV with the closeout. Really good patience being shown by W7M. Well, well Pasha makes the right play because he doesn't want to overswing. He's just playing Guardian to allow the plant to go down behind mm. him anyway. But the Nitrosile comes through to not only kill him, but also open up a good sight line to be able to deny said plant anyway. Mm. But it's like a game of chess in that little moment. Who's going to swing? And I think whoever did win would have made the mistake. In the end, no one does. And it's the Nitro Cell from JV that opens things up by getting that kill and then the sight line as well towards the planter. Really solid round from W7M. But again, the Five VP, uh, the, the round prior was a 3v3. This was a 2v2. The round prior, they got the plant down. This one, they almost did. Like, these are close rounds. Yeah, it's like I was saying, it feels much different to the previous maps. And yes, W7M are up three and one. That ultimately is what matters most. It's the score at the top of your screen. Virtus Pro are starting to fall behind, but it is close. I do agree with you. So 3-1, W7M just able to edge ahead here on border. It's mm, been a fascinating like series. How many times have we seen this actually so far? This one? I don't think much. Ten seconds left. We've seen it four times in total. <laughs> Across a possible 97 rounds. Five seconds Very remaining. low pick rate. We are getting it here. 50% win rate as well. Won twice, lost twice so far. Time to the tip the scales one way or another with the conclusion of round five. Don't mind the ram here either with the boogie auto breaches. I love it. Towards the uh, security position, open up those floorboards, get that vert control. Clearly, though, an area that W7M are going to want to defend pretty vigorously. They've brought the castle barricade as well. Like the mirror here, two from Nate. W7M. Again, don't quite know what the pass mark really will be. Could end up being defender sided, so really hard to gauge that. But right now, just take it one round at a time. They're doing that, and they've got themselves a decent lead. Yeah, depending on their read of this, and I'm seeing always currently running around the north side of the building over towards Archives, they can start up in Armory Archives, sweep their way across to West Main, unseat Nade and the Mirror Window, which then opens up security a lot more. The fear now being that Nade can quite happily sit as the Mirror on West Main Wall, open up security wall from the other side of the, of the crossing, and just protect all of security behind the safety of a Mirror Window. So there's a few steps that Virtus.pro need to go through first before they can even start thinking about the site. And as we've seen a couple of times, when W7M put a problem before them they can't easily deal with, like the hold around East Stairs back in round one. It does come to bite Virtus Pro, and W7M tend to come out on top. It could be 4 1, unless they find a way to get through this problem pretty quickly. Kind of just mention the fact that there's only three drones re remaining right now for Virtus Pro, and they're going to need these drones too if they want to kind of flush out this position towards security, towards armory as well. So they're not going to be able to have too much information to take these positions. We love Solus. They're losing these drones, and yeah, don't we just love Solus? <laughs> Activating Solus. That's the main reason why it's so sparse as well. Now they're going actually rather than going via West Main, trying to go via Fountain through 90. And and then into, side, uh, into the top floor there, into security, to try and unsettle. JV is currently playing up. He is sat up just right on top of a hatch, though, so could drop away at a moment's notice. However, look at the clock. Nearly two minutes gone just to try and deal with this first problem. Shots come through. KZ loses a lot of his life, and then eventually all of it to Dan. Opening kill for VP. Been a bit of a rarity over the last couple of rounds to close out this first half, but finally with a chance with 60 seconds left. They are the ones with that advantage. Still haven't cleared out security just yet, though. Still also being held by JV. Gotta get moving here. He's still dancing around. We saw this out of Casey and Herds back on Skyscraper as well, knowing when to back away. Will he overstay his welcome? Will he get punished for it? Time will tell. At this point, that was what they needed. Nade being unseated makes security a lot more dangerous. Yes, there is a trade, but JV has no option but to drop away as his backline support has been removed. So a little bit of a weird way of going about it. They kind of reverse things a little bit, but they've got what they need. Down into another kill. Two left for W7S. Yeah, able to play off of his own boogie auto breacher there as he's finally been able to get that security control. He can finally get these auto breaches oh, going to open up these floorboards and how quick you can play off of them. Clearly on display right there in the end. Shepard to close it out. One round at a time, but this one goes to VP. That's 2-3. One round to go at the half.
It's a real kicker for Nade. I think if he'd stayed alive behind the safety of the mirror window and the reinforcement, instead of being a little bit exposed, he stays alive there. They can't push onto West Main and into security from the top side, and JV can probably hold his position another 10, 15 seconds. And at that point, I think Virtus Pro have left themselves with far too much to do with too little time. It was played very well up until that one pivotal moment. And I've joked a few times about the whole like dominoes being like you knock over a small domino and before you know it, the round is being lost or the series is being lost or whatever it might be. That was that moment in that round. I mean, at a time, this, this game is just a game of moments, isn't it? And especially in a series like this, going into the third map, one round of the time territory, really difficult to sort of predict where things will go into that second half. So, so curious. And we head to Bathroom and Talos to close it out here in the sixth round. But W7M's defense. Right, well, last time it was uh, a very offside defense for W7M. They had three players left, if you recall, and it was Nade who was sat out towards Vent's workshop side that ultimately had quite a commanding angle across the plant that did eventually go down for Shepard. The vertical control came through. Just lots of moving parts in that round as well. We intended to see them staying off the site. So Virtus Pro will have some idea about what to expect. How it plays out, though, anybody's guess as I keep on saying, it really is a battle of equals in this series. Yeah, Virtus Pro also, that last round again, touched on it. There wasn't really that many drones left for that initial push over towards security. So they were able to do that without a lot of that information being readily available. And again, it's kind of happening here too. This time though, no solar's being brought by W7M, but still three drones have been shot out very early on. Clearly not make or break though for Virtus Pro on the attack. And this one should be pretty simplistic in terms of again, trying to just get that vert control. There's a drone through Pasha now in towards security. They'll want to take that sweep across. It's been a lot of mute throughout this series and really across a lot of the tournament, but not in this round. So the KB here, even more efficient, more useful than you might otherwise be. And even in the case when the mute is on side, still very scary as of course Romans can't carry around a new jammer with them, they will still get sniffed out. But here, every time that call comes through, all five players will be pinged. Cameras will not be available. They'll have to get themselves out of danger and back towards site. I love the positioning though, right now, at least for Virtus Pro, really putting that, that pressure on again, at, at W7M. They haven't got any kind of E-stairs control. Would like to see them try and eventually go for that and try and clear out, say, a Philippe box on that smoke who's really trying to deny, especially towards top waiting, but still trying to get some shots in from this kind of break position. It's JV though, who gets a kill onto always and really finally solid advantage though. Then Dan gets the trade and that actually does open up that E-stairs position now for the throw, but they can't compound on it because Hertz gets a huge kill onto Dan. Is another trade going to come through? No, JV doubles down, gets rid of Pasha, and a dominant way to close the half for W7M. Keep on speaking about that E-Stairs, and for Lee Pox, he got the one, got taken out, and they say, well, we really want E-Stairs. Retake it, and everything just falls apart there in the back line because it's such a commanding spot to be in. Like we said earlier on, you just get that long angle straight through the map. And for me, the beautiful thing about border is basically you can shoot from side to side, top to bottom, corner to corner. There's softballs everywhere. You know who else is beautiful? It's Jesse, and he's got a little bit of information for us. Oh, you're far too kind. Thank you very much. Listen, my last prediction didn't exactly hit the mark, so I'd like to try again. I think we saw yesterday W7M play border against Bleed, and they won three out of four attacking halves. They won a Monsi push direct onto Ventilation. They won an Osa push direct onto Archives, and they won a push with Grim direct onto Armory. Those direct style of pushes are things that we may be seeing again from W7M, and if they do come out, Virtus Pro needs to be sure they're not caught off guard by them. Because it happened yesterday, because they saw a lot of success with that, Virtus Pro should be ready, but it's also a style of push that W7M are extremely proficient at. So it's going to be a tough job, but I do think Virtus Pro, if they're ready for it, might have a good chance of shutting it down. Thank you so much, Jesse, and very much curious to now see what this second half is going to bring for us. Virtus Pro onto the defense. Will this end up being Defender side of border. Wouldn't be a shock if that does happen <laughs> with the way the tournament has been playing out. Yeah. W7M, though, they look like they're just starting to get that mojo going here, and that's danger signs for VP. Series feels very much back to front, doesn't it, with an attacker sided cafe, a defender sided uh, border, at least with how things currently stack up. But the second half will tell all. As Jesse said, direct towards site, the sort of thing you lean into when you have a Monty on site. They did change away from that last second, so it might be a change in tack here coming through at the last moment. The beauty being that, as said, they've seen Virtus Pro play this map twice as since this tournament has started. That's not a lot of time for VP to change up their strats, so that information is fresh.
out. They can look at how they're set up on certain sites. They can bring along counters to it. So do we say they have done their diligence and done their homework? This could be a pretty smooth sailing over towards that seven round win and get the series two and one. Yeah, I'm not going to be looking too far ahead with the way the series has played out. One round at a time still for me. Absolutely not going anything more than that. KZ, little shoulder peek. Looking for the entry in. No one's watching though. He can just sneak straight on in. As we begin the second half, really difficult to kind of ascertain who's going to have the advantage here. It's not quite KZ. Yeah, he got some damage in, but it's Joystick. He's the one who gets the open to go on to Hertz. Hertz had a very decent first half. Gone early on the IQ. As Joystick is able to just dance his way around security on the Yorick's a little mad dash, and he's still in there. Hasn't been displaced at all or dislodged, especially though with that skeleton key. It's <laughs> deadly from below. Finally gets uh, taken out, and it's a four versus four. Collecting skeletons with said skeleton key as well. One for one. It's so often been the way these rounds play out. You see one team get one, it leads into the other on the other side, and then all kinds of madness ensues, as you're seeing here. An advantage taken momentarily by Virtus Pro in a four versus two. Down now to a three, and you're into that kind of second life of the round where it's now a three versus two. How many times did we see it in the first half? These 3v3s, these 2v2s, yep. these little post plants Honestly. and these little plant opportunities. We're going to see it once again. 60 seconds remain, three versus two, but it's W7M this time now on the back foot. Lesser on terms of players, although not for longer. Nade gets a big kill. On to Pasha, still can't get involved the way he would like. Three and seven. Oh, Nade's not done though. Two in quick succession. And there goes that advantage, but now switched over to W7M. Dan, he's been the man though. He has at nine and four, but he's up against Nadu. Equally, he's absolutely flying oh. off the other side. Deletes his rival. KZ still standing. You don't want to be writing him off anytime soon. In comes the step, and Dan wins out a 1v2. Oh, he is the man, Des. He is. Dan the Destroyer sounds a little bit more dangerous, though. Dan the man sounds Dan like the man's just like an really average cheesy. office worker. It's the kind of thing I'd say like high school, man. <laughs> Dan, you're the man. No, Dan the Destroyer is a bit more dangerous. Well, Dan gets the clutch one versus two, three, four. <laughs> it's how Nade turns around a 2v3, and then Dan's like, nah, 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 one v 2 not, not, not happening. So it's like, his teammates die, so he can look even better. Oh, and you just breathe momentarily for what's turning into one of the games of the tournament so far with the way that we've kind of gone. Not too many 2-1s, a couple here and there, but certainly two real juggernauts going back and forth is certainly a different level. Does this one have OT written all over it in the third map? Here is the replays of the round, and Dan started things off as well to give them that advantage, an advantage that they then lost, but then one that he was able to clutch up anyway in the 1v2. I do love the passion for Pasha. I'm rating it. <laughs> it's either wild scream in celebration or slam desk. No in between. Hey, passion on both sides of the spectrum. Yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely on board with that. Alrighty. That gap has just shrunk down to one round. 4 3 to W7M. But a cross for a good start in this half. And look at what Casey's bringing to the party. Yeah, can play off of the smokes from himself along with the Docker B of Nate. So there's a couple of smokes that KZ can utilize. In terms of the glance pick, of course. Mm. Probably need that angle. So if, if Virtus Pro don't entertain it and don't play the game, then it's great. Consideration being, there's no Warden on side here, even a Maestro against halfway house towards it. They've got no easy way to deal with what will be going on through that smoke. The positive, though, of course, is having the Solus. If you're going in for a plan through the cover of smoke, for example, then Solus should be able to help you out with that. Oh, first one down. More to challenge in towards West Main here than anything else, but no one is there. And surely you'd think an Execute will come in off the back of this, but no, absolutely nothing. The Diffuser is down. Outside the northwest part of the map, I'm not quite sure what the game plan is there, guys. Well, they have lost in. Oh, they've also lost the pass. And the glass. That's it. <laughs> a big part. The pie tricks out. That's it. It's over. A big part of what they probably wanted to do in this round now has been eliminated. <laughs> it's another one for one again. It just happens every single yeah. round. This will probably end up in the two versus two with 30 seconds left. We already, yeah. we've seen the script. It's been leaked. And a 40. Yeah, the problem with that was they were so focused on trying to get the top floor control. Obviously, the diffuser going down inside of workshop vents wasn't really the focus at that point. But that meant Virtus Pro could turn all attention towards the incoming aggression, and they've answered it pretty well. Attackers dropped the diffuser. Joystick, though, gives Virtus Pro the advantage here in the eighth round with under 90 seconds remaining in the four versus three. Push forward from Herds for Leapox there as well in support. But they've lost JV. He wasn't part of the party. 
struck down on his venturing forward oh, nest into the map. It's been all VP on the forward front here. In a three versus one, Felipox has lost his friends. He's lost his companions. One he can still bring back up though, in herds, and a lot of time still left. <laughs> Not so much anymore. An easy closeout for Virtus Pro, though. It feels weird to have so many rounds. Like, oh, like previous majors, for example, you come to a point where it's like, oh, only 10 seconds left. They've got to make something happen. Whereas here, so often you look at the clock as it's coming down to a, a, a final couple of gunfights, and it's like there's still half the round left. <laughs> it's crazy. 4-4, four, four, the scoreline here. Bathroom and Tellers is where we're looking to be heading for round number nine. Who takes the lead? Who gets that sort of break point? Hmm. Speak about round nine a lot here. It's not so big in a, a, a deal detail. Normally it's at five and three that you start looking and saying, okay, is it three match points to fight through or does the gap close to one? And here they're dead even though it's four and four. Mm. So not quite as impactful. Still, every man's opportunity to take this game. Of course, recent history, the last couple of rounds have gone no! the way of Birdus Pro quite convincingly. W7M have probably got to get something figured out in this round. Otherwise, I expect attack timeout to come in as they try and draw up some new plans. So a big opportunity here for Virtus Pro. Of course, they lost their opening best of three series to Team Liquid. They lost that one 2-1. They were able to bounce back against M80. Oh, by though, M80 haven't looked all that impressive so far here at SI. They also lost to W7M. Very comfortable in both of those series. W7M proved yesterday that they are not infallible. Dropped a map to Bleed, dropped a map now to VP, and on the verge of maybe dropping another one here if they don't win on Border. Into the ninth round we go, all tied up, 4-4. Four, four. Oh, I got no idea. I, I legitimately at this point could not tell you who I'm even thinking. You could argue maybe VP, the fact they're on defense, yeah. the fact they've won the last couple right. of rounds, yeah. I think they're looking quite passionate. But W7M, just their skill, you cannot disregard that. And the fact that I don't think mentally they'd be too affected by this either. The change of plan is the Monty. We've spoken about Monty a lot in this series. We'll see how things play out. Last time when Virtus Pro were playing it back in the first half, they really got stuck around East Stairs. The blessing here being that there is no one on Virtus Pro currently defending those East Stairs. It doesn't take a couple of shots to come through, though, to force Joystick at least to back away momentarily. He's ready to challenge onto the Monty here. I can't imagine he's going to go running out and try and knock him down, given there are three or four players on the side of W7M, all hell-bent on taking this side of the map. <gasps> oh, he gets down, and the finish! How has he got away down. with that scot free? Yeah, KZ can't get away with his life. The logic bombs did go out early, so at least got some kind of value there on the dock. Could be over towards top waiting. Comes through, as always. Able to shoot out some of these Salmas. Gumon thrown out, bit of 40. Yeah, Nate's got a good position top east, but more needs to be done here from W7M. And they've lost herds as well. Oh, my finger. Good shot from Pasha. So far, it does maybe just feel like Virtus Pro could be finding the momentum. Nice little swing, though, Behind from JV the with the Montang. Shot in the back and shot in the heart here. JV to fall. Top east is in control, and the game might just be in control for Virtus Pro. They go to 5-4. It's scary how much these, we're seeing deja vu and things repeat themselves. Like think about when VP got stuck on East stairs and couldn't get rid of the two or three players that were hovering around just in long hallway or just inside of the waiting room balcony. It was hard to move forward. And really here, you've had one player, the Oryx joystick, keeping them at bay. And even when he's taken out, who comes up the stairs? Guess who? It's Shepard with a shotgun. We saw a very similar play come out when Felipox died on these stairs for W7M. We had to forget which player it was. We came up behind them and cleaned house off the back of it. History is repeating itself, but it's Virtus Pro with three rounds back to back. Understandably, W7M, they want to break the momentum, have that conversation because they have to find a way through and it's starting to look like that door is closing. It was a 3-1 lead for W7M. Four of the last five rounds now have been won by Virtus Pro. They've clearly got the momentum going towards the back end of Border and this tactical timeout from W7M could not come at a better time for them to just kind of talk things over, try and maybe halt this momentum that VP have built up. They've looked quite cl clinical on the defense. They're not really making too many mistakes, not allowing too many entry points either for W7M. Mm. I don't really think that Montang did a whole lot either. Yes, it kind of got some positioning towards top east, but that's all it could realistically do. They lost too many players elsewhere. When you then lose that, you have the Montang, you don't have the firepower, and I think they have opted to maybe kind of move better. away from it. And yeah, this was a big little swing from Joystick. Again, because it's the Montang on the other side, on the top east exit, there's no shots really to come through. So you can't quite get as punished as if there was someone else with a gun ready to go. Big moment here. VP take the lead. 
really got to see teams figure out a new way of cracking East Stairs, I think, because it's just been an absolute battleground between these two teams time and time again. No one quite having the dream answer to get through it. Stepping away from the Monty, though, still sticking with the Fever Shields. We've got the Exile coming along in this round for Nade, which normally suggests that you're going to see a push coming through archives. Get control of that northeast side of the map, control office, and plant just inside of sight. Let's not forget, though, that Nade, back on the other side of things, was the difference maker playing on the view. So Shepard could yet be that guy. He could be him to get below and stop a play like that coming on through. But big games have big moments. What will be the next one? Who can stamp their mark? That's the question here into the 10th round at 5-4. It's not quite that 5-3 where you get the three match points, but it's a similar effect. A VP get this round, two match points, staring down the barrel in terms of a serious loss for W7M early on here at SI24. Nate sets up one of these Talon shields, another one to come through on the back to protect himself. Claymore's there as well. So he can pretty much just sit pretty now. He's quite safe at this point. Oh, you missed the impact, bro. <laughs> Not quite the dream from always. Just being a little bit too quick to pull himself back there. Didn't want to find himself gunned down. And that window is closed now because Felipox, as you can see to the right hand side of your screen, is playing on the window. Will not be able to pull that off again. Those shields will stay intact. Drone deployed. Stay clear of the blast. <laughs> oh, Pasha, how is he still alive? Slimmest of margins. He's taking a leaf out of Herds' book, I think, and walking away on 2 HP. On a big operator, too, in the ward, and you can kind of think about what he can do in the late game. Has a Nitro he Cell as well. Capital as well. Capital. That's where the ward is really coming to his own. Once the, once the shooting starts, like this actually is supposed to come through maybe afterwards. That's when you'll start seeing things really come to light. Nay starting his march on fours. He got good cover, but two kills come the way of Virtus Pro incredibly quickly which means that plant is not going to go down and someone's got to step into Nade's grave. No shield to march on forward with no protection anymore. This is looking ropey for W7M. Felipox does step in there, grabs that diffuser, tries to play the same position. Hurts just can't get involved. Bot metal, no one there to be found. Bit of barbed wire. Ops to now go for a rotate. 60 mm. seconds. Still that time goes back to what you were saying earlier, where it's like we see these kind of trades come out. A lot, of, a lot has happened, but there's still a lot of time here. Felipox just holds the angle, probably waiting for the reinforcements. He's got no cover coming in on the, on the window of archives. He's instead going his way all the way at West Main and joystick making his way across, almost getting tagged down, but not quite. Has managed to rejoin his team. Felipox and the team, they've got to find a kill or something here. Herds on the backstab, disrupted by the Fenrir. It's looking messy but they've got to force some gunfights Shepard's not going to let it happen just like Nade was the hero last time Shepard is here JB92 the last one left standing against two members of VP with 30 seconds to play yep not a lot of time not a lot of health not a lot of chances here Shepard with a shotgun up close he's oh, it's the headshot and Pasha realizing that they've got two opportunities to take the series away from W7M we knew it would be a good game coming in today, and it has done nothing but deliver time and time again. That deja vu again, <laughs> the mute player with a shotgun, admittedly on different floors, but both having massive impacts. Nay with a drop down, forcing a replant when they were on the defense. This time around, Shepard believed that was three kills playing in that position. And W7M looking a little bit forlorn here, a little bit short on ideas, not quite sure how to get through VP, who, again, did not play Border in 2023. This is a new map. They have rolled out. They've played it twice so far. W7M had time to come up with ideas, but even they can't get through it. You might just be seeing a new juggernaut of Border rolling out into the server. They've just looked so switched on in a lot of areas. Didn't really panic when those talent shields go down. Impact didn't hit, and you kind of think, oh, that's not ideal. But then they wait. They know that Osa wants to push forward, get that shield inside. So then you wait, then you unite yourself, then you get the kill. So it's those little moments where they don't panic, they don't rush, they keep their positions, keep their, their cool in their decision making yeah, has been absolutely forward. paramount for VP on both attack and also on defense. And right now I'm kind of questioning W7M. They've just looked very stalled out, very difficult to get inside of the map, not getting a lot of map control, really kind of too one dimensional. A lot of their focus in that last round was around that Osa. Once that failed, and the fact that we saw Felipox then try and double down in that push, they didn't really have much else. Ooh. Six, four. Four. four rounds on the bounce. We've got to see magic from W7M in these next two rounds. The best they can get is overtime. They can't even just completely close out the map in regulation. Oh, no. And that was a little bit blind, but the trade state there. Shock horror. It's 4v4. Wow. The JV's been good. 12 and 8. 
standing up in a very heated match with a lot on the line here. Again, we kind of think about, could this be top spot in the groups? Could this be a trip to the quarterfinals? And both of these teams only play once more throughout the group stage, so not many more chances to try and claim that top spot. Makes that path oh, so much easier. Oh, the push in, a matter of pixels. Shepard. Oh no! What? JV just oh, wins out on the barest of margins. There's how, and then the third in the round from JV. Giving hope oh, and a lifeline for W7M. Surely the round to be won with only Dan. Yes, he's been great. He's been uh, simply marvelous, but still in a 1v4. Surely he wouldn't be able to get it done from here. I can't imagine. JV just go down, but it's for Leap up to the 2k to close as well. Oh. Tell me you don't want to lose without telling me you don't want to lose. JV doesn't want to lose. <sighs> Three kills, just marches his way forward. And admittedly, a little bit unfortunate on Shepard's side, I think, to not get the kill at close range. But JV does enough to keep his team in it one more round. And we've got that overtime on map three that we dreamed of. <laughs> Six, five score line. One match point averted there for W7M, but one more still to go. Could this be heartbreak so close to maybe sending this one to overtime? Where does it come from though? It comes from JV. That's Probably not a surprise. Look. Going into that oh. round, had 11 for white essentially, and was able to then just keep going. Mate, oh, mate. Ears are ringing, eyes are blind. It doesn't matter. There's a 3K from JV. He He's probably the man. had about a second of visibility across five seconds there. He got flushed twice. Bearing in mind, that's by his own team. <laughs> <laughs> and still manages to know exactly where to turn, when he's going to get pushed, deals with it expertly. No doubt with a bit of guidance from his team as well, some info being fed back and forth, but he's the one ultimately who pressed the left mouse button. He's the one who found the heads of Virtus Pro. And now they're staring at a potential overtime if it goes this way. Incredible. Do you know who starts on what side in overtime? I can get you that information if you would really like, but I feel like it's going to... I feel like I might jinx it, though. How many times have we done that as cast? We're like, you know what, let's go and have a look. Let's do it excited. Let's have a look. Don't put your phone down. Don't look. Don't look. Okay, I won't. Let's have a nice surprise. I could get the info. Let's treat ourselves. And you know what? If we do go to overtime, I will then get you that info. I mean, we'll know anyway. But what if we don't go to overtime? I don't know. Because that's a what if then. Let's wait until we get there. It could be a little reward if we get through 12. One thing I know, though, is this has been arguably one of the better games of the tournament so far. I agree. It's been a very short lived tournament, three days in, but still, it's been absolutely sensational when you kind of look at really the entire series holistically, both stealing each other's map picks, both looking sometimes down and out and question marks, and then both finding to the ability to resurrect themselves and look sensational. I really enjoyed SSG Wolves on day one. That was a three mapper as well. Yes, Although that the, was good. the last map was a little bit anticlimactic. It was a 7 2. The map was definitely, or the series was definitely more scrappy than this has been. This just feels like, again, a real battle of titans, of real equals. Yes, it's looked a little bit messy, but we've had a new meta. There's lots of things to learn. There's lots of pace, which means lots of room for mistakes to come through. But it makes for actually really exciting watching. And here, every shot is going to count. As we've said, this really is the battle for top spot unless one of these two teams mess up in the next couple of days and don't take games that they're expected to take. It's event workshop here, minute 40, all that yapping, and we've already got down to 90 seconds left. A bit of a slow burning push here from W7M. No surprise to throw the way things have gone here for Porter JV. No! no! Well, the hero from the last round now has been thwarted. Pasha, hello, welcome. Talk about a moment to stand up and have an impact there with a massive kill onto a massive player. The Ash is gone. It's advantage VP here on match point round. Three of BP again, just setting up this triangle to try and protect West Main as best they can. Casey, you can see underneath here as well, trying to unsettle the man playing on half all right idea. He's got the man there, but can he find him with that skeleton key? Claim another victim. No, it won't. But W7 ever down to three. Pasha through the wall. Nate survives, just barely. Slim margins here. Big moments. Pasha prone, and he hits the head of KZ. It's starting to fall apart for W7M. That dream of OT in the third map doesn't look like it will be at the reality. Unfortunately, Dev, unless something crazy were to develop with Felipox, the entry's good. He gets a kill. That's one on the board. Shepard slow. Red pink information here. F not mine. How annoying. No vision. He gets slaughtered. Dan with a double kill. He's been sensational. 15 kills for him. Down to Nate. He cannot survive. And Virtus Pro say, we are here to ruin the party. Your last dance doesn't really matter to us. They take down W7M. The champions might just about lose that top spot. It means a lot to Pasha. We've seen it from round one all the way through. 
massive result for Virtus Pro. And again, a, a, a home handsome as well coming into the competition. I was really nervous that we wouldn't see a strong Virtus Pro, but they have been phenomenal throughout so far. And it's theirs for the taking now. They jump ahead. In fact, I think they sit on the same points now, I think about it. Three points for a win. They'll be, yeah, same points. Both tied on eight points, I want to say. So now, actually, this head-to-head -head result, plus the result for the next couple of days, they drop a single map, for example, the other team, the door opens, and they can jump through. It's still anyone's race to the finish, but Verse Pro do have the edge ever so slightly. Yeah, don't have that full confirmation yet. We'll get it soon enough, but, I mean, coming into this game, both teams had a 2-0, both teams had a 2-1. This one goes to 2-1, so it's been a little bit back and forth throughout, really, all of their matches so far at SI24. What a sensational game, though, and for Verse Pro to close it out 7-5, they do not send us to overtime. They do get the job done. And for W7M, after dropping a map to Bleed, now also losing this particular game, not the best of two days for them. <sighs> Not quite for the team that everyone's seen down as being eventual winners of the whole competition, right? But it just sets things up in a really interesting way. Like, I don't normally like seeing repeats of games that you have in groups. You like to see different teams playing each other. But for me, that's the kind of game that I'd love to see again in playoffs. Mm. You know one thing I loved? I loved our little cast together. It was sensational, Des. Lovely Very working fun. with you. Over to the desk. Thank you very much for that, gentlemen. You did it justice, the justice that this game needed. We got Joystick joining us from Virtus Pro. Hello, guys. What a game that was. How does it feel to beat the world champions? Honestly, it's always insane to play versus Brazilian teams because, like in Europe, almost no one playing like this, like this playstyle. So it's uh, so hard for us to play versus uh, this playstyle every time. So especially when we play versus Brazilians, as we like played versus Liquid, it was so hard for us. We need to like a lot of preparation for them, uh, but you can't prepare because they just randomly like picking aggressively, and it's so hard to control. So it's an insane matchup. I have a I have a question. So skyscraper, when you guys first started attack, they met you guys with pure aggression. We're shutting you guys down. I was worried going into this border that they would be the exact same thing. What did you guys, did you guys do anything differently or did you just keep the strats the exact same? Actually not, we were talking after the skyscraper was going wrong and we just understand that we just don't kill people. They, yeah. they every time picking and we just can't kill people. We every time like open dances and something like this. So we just understand that we need to like, I don't know, slow down a little bit, right. just stay outside the map, like doing nothing and maybe they will pick and we can find open frags. We don't need to do anything like for that. That's exactly what yeah, me and yeah. Jesse were saying. The, yeah. the one way to counter that playstyle was to just wait for them to peak. No, I love to hear that. So you said that you struggle against the Brazilians coming into this game. Did you change anything about the way that you performed? You just came into this knowing what you wanted? Uh, we never change anything versus other teams because we like focus on our like uh, strats and something like this. So we can change like little things. Yeah. Mm. Some, I, I, I don't know, I, we picked more operators for control. Um, Rome and something right. like this, so because they are more aggressive, but um, in total, we don't do it. Well, I noticed your guys' playstyle and border specifically, what you guys did to M80 is practically what you displayed here against W7M. Your guys' crossfires and setups, you guys are almost forcing W7M into an unwinnable position or at least a lot of trade potential yeah. on your guys' end. Yeah, because border is like small map, you can control almost all, all the map without any like special utilities. Yeah. So you just need to really playing good with your teammates, like callouts, crossfires. Sure. If someone comes from the like other places, you need to go fast, rotate fast, and just help your team. And that's how border works. I Absolutely. Think. Now you've got one more game left. It's against Bleed. How do you feel going into that game? Uh, I think we we are feeling good right now, but we have a lot of struggle. I don't know how it works, but we can perform good versus good teams. <laughs> but uh, you know when like level. Uh, level a little bit down. I don't know how to explain it in English. Just but like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Like, that's right. We can struggle a lot. I don't know why, how it works, but it, it, it's worked like that for us. But yeah. we need, again, like more prepare and we can't underestimate their bleed for guys sure. because yeah. they, they're playing really good right now. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. They, Absolutely. they won Oregon. Yeah. Uh, yesterday versus yep. W7M. And that's one of your guys' yeah. favorite maps. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they're coming up against Liquid uh, after this, so it's going to be an interesting one. Joystick, would you like to say anything to the audience before we let you go? Of course, guys. Thank you a lot for the messages, for your support. Like, we see it. Everyone, thank you. I, I don't know. I don't know what to say anymore. Skin. Mm -hmm. Skin. Yeah, of course, of course. Buy skins, guys. Never forget. They're going to start giving you a commission <laughs> for that, Lex. I'll tell you what, Joystick, thank you very much for joining thank us. Guys. Congratulations on a big win. Thanks. All right. So, this now moving forward. 
they take they take equal top spot with W7M in terms of points. Now, obviously, where it goes from there, Liquid still have to play. However, the uh, round distribution works. I haven't had a look yet, but obviously, eight points for both of those teams. I mean, I just want to say I am super proud of VP and them coming into this tournament. They look like a completely different team from what we've seen in Atlanta. I mean, this last match in general, I mean, it was just so back and forth. And one thing I really noticed is both teams going into this last map really respected each other. They really were adopting each other's play styles at any given moment of playing super aggressive or playing really passive, playing the trade game, playing just a really good game of Siege overall. Yeah, I think a lot of people kind of had W7M as winning every game that they come through. They are going to be the favorites, but for Verse Pro to come through, play a great game of Siege against W7M, come out on top. They absolutely deserve this win. Really impressive stuff coming through from them. I mentioned at the start of this, there's a difference between the two borders that we saw from Virtus Pro on day one and day two were Joystick and Shepard. And I think both of those players really stepped up in the second half on defense here against W7M. We saw Joystick in these great power positions, whether that was East Stairs holding it down, whether that was in security, getting cheeky little kills, it didn't seem to matter. He was always performing and uh, standing up for the team. And then Shepard had some huge moments on defense, obviously flanking up East Stairs to support Joystick when he was uh, going down there, being pushed by the Monty. Nobody saw that coming. He, this is the play right there. <laughs> right now. Fake of the devil. Uh, and then using his Nitro Cell to deny the Osa plant on Archives a couple rounds later, he was so, so impactful coming through from Virtus Pro. So both those players stepped up big time, and that's what you've got to do when you're going against the best in the world. I, I also haven't even seen W7M slow down the way that they did no. in that border game. I have yet to see them play like that. And that fact that VP forced them into that position is crazy to me. Well, I mean, that's just what happens when you are at that level. You ha you force them to respect you, right? And, yeah. you know, you can see what it means on the faces of Virtus Pro. I mean, Pasha is probably the easiest person to uh, sure. showcase Absolutely. in that moment. So loud, so vocal throughout. I actually want to ask you a question, Lax. Yeah. So many moments came down to 2v3. So many close, late rounds what do you think attests to that the communication entirely i mean that that's the best case scenario is that you're in a trade potential that way of yep. playing the trade game whether you're up or whether you're lower it's just communicating with your teammates whether you're up in the man advantage or you're in the disadvantage it's making sure that you can at least get someone to make it somewhat easier because if that communication isn't there it doesn't matter if you're in a 2v1 you're in a 1v3 like what i mean sorry 3v3 whatever like yeah. if the communication and the teamwork isn't there it doesn't really matter but both teams did play these 2v3s very well and executed it perfectly in terms of communication i'm gonna ask you jesse yeah. Is there a hallmark of this game? Is there a, a note to leave on for what was really a, a very, very tight and close series? I think the note to leave on, at least from a broader viewer perspective, is just that these are two of the best teams at the entire tournament. It's very likely that we see these two teams, if they happen to find each other, meeting again in the upper bracket somewhere later on in the tournament. You, you're going to see both these squads go far. W7M, we knew that from the first uh, time that we saw them in the server. But for Virtus Pro, it was a huge question mark coming in. Would they stand up? They've yet to make it in front of a live audience. I think here in Sao Paulo is where they're going to do that. I think they got a good run and they've been putting in the work and the effort and it shows. And I mean, I thought maybe they were going to change stuff, but they said they haven't changed anything. They're just focusing on what they need to do in order to win and it's working. So, I mean, I guess don't don't fix what's not broken. Look, that's some critical insight that we get there from Definitely. Joystick. You know, finding finding out that they're not wavering. Doesn't matter who they verse. They come up against W7M. It's, yeah, especially given the meta too. Right. And I mean, it, it's they're not changing like on a fundamental like what they're doing day to day or like even round to round, but they are like clearly changing and improving their overall strategy. They've added two brand new maps to their map pool. Borders looking better and better every single time they play it. Skyscraper, you know what? Their defenses were really, really good. <laughs> they good nailed the away, defenses Jesse. on Skyscraper. So uh, I'm glad we are seeing an evolution of VP because this is a team that we talk about for ages and ages of being the exact same squad time and time again. They're slow. They're methodical. They play a very small map pool. It seems like that is starting to change, if nothing else. We're seeing more maps get worked into the pool for Virtus Pro, and that makes me really excited. There I mean, were a lot of uh, nail-biting moments in this. Yeah, I mean, one more thing I want to say that no, I love that Joystick said is when, when he did say that they aren't switching anything, they're just changing small details 
details that's so important even for the community to take in here is that Jump. just bringing a different operator or moving someone into a different position completely throw off the entire team setup and how they want to approach something just by adding something that's so minor of just an operator or just a completely different position and joystick set it themselves they aren't switching a whole lot so if it's yep. just bringing a different operator moving someone around it does make a drastic impact in the overall performance all right well it's time to have a look at the intel play of the game a lot of nail biting moments coming out of this series i knew it was gonna in be particular <laughs> but i mean how do you kick how else do you kick start a series well i mean you have to kick start it like this especially when jesse was talking up how do you shut down herds and then you get into the first game of the match and you have herds playing like this making that 4k look easy swinging out on like i said w7m plays defense like you're like they're the attacking team like you almost think like is the bomb outside at that point with the way w7m plays and herds just displayed it right there just swinging out getting a 4k like it's nothing <laughs> i yeah. mean that's that's what it looks like right is when you're that good you make it look like nothing but we still have of course one game left let's go and have a look sorry at the schedule for how things have wrapped up so far fury and scars are still playing their matchup one a piece the battle of apac is still on but of course uh, actually you know what jesse is there any game in particular that shocked you is there anything that's disappointed you it kind of looks like most things have gone exactly the way we needed to maybe outside of just the virtus pro w7m game yeah i mean the match that we just watched has to be the biggest shock anytime yeah. w7m loses it's going to be a shock i think in terms of disappointments i am still looking at bleed i hate to i hate to mention it but <sighs> 0-2 again. I mean, they've really been struggling so far. And the thing, if you watch that game, is they're all such close matches. Bliss have been playing really well against uh, the opponents that they've come up against. Yep. But thus far, I mean, they've yet to really find a win. So still looking for that for them to get out of their group. Yeah, that one hits home for me. Oh, he's just gonna bring it up, don't you? you Quite sorry, I'm sorry. You're gonna, you're gonna ruin my day. Was there anything for you, Lax? Any any, any note to make before we move on? Um, I mean. <sighs> It's just been a good few days of Siege, to oh, be yeah. completely honest. Like, sure, you see the two O's on the board, but actually watching back those games, you see how a lot intense, you see how close and intense those games really are. Yep. So I definitely recommend, if you didn't catch some of those games, to go back in the, either in the Bravo stream or the Rainbow Six stream and re-watch those and really see how those games panned out. Close and intense. Could that be the title of our next series, Bleed? They take on Liquid. It's coming up after this.